Redditors that have worked in restaurants, for example Hooters or Twin Peaks, how were the working conditions for you and did any customers overstep their boundaries? What happened? I worked at Hooters for around a year and was surprised by a few of the dynamics. The girls were a lot nicer to each other than I would have expected. Not nearly as much catiness as you would expect on a staff of all women. Most of us were students, a few were moms, and we would sit out after work and talk about the good, the bad, and the jackasses. Regulars are huge there, at least at my location. A regular would have his favorite girl, come in at the start of your shift, and leave at the end, and they made up 70% of my tips probably. Lots of phone numbers and gifts, but honestly not a whole lot more than I received working at a neighborhood bar. I quit one day finally when a customer pretended to be blind, dark sunglasses, feeling the edge of the tables to get around, and asked me to sit beside him and read him a menu. Not that strange of a request, until he put 100 bucks down my shirt and attempted to feel my boobs inside my shirt, told a manager, who said it was my fault, transferred the table, and I quit at the end of my shift. Worked at Hooters about a decade ago. I don't actually have a lot going on up top, but I've got a pretty nice butt, so they hired me to round out the staff. Most customers were perfectly nice and polite. I was surprised at how many families came to eat there. We used to have theme nights, and one evening it was all bikers. I was a little intimidated going into it, but can truthfully say they were some of the friendliest and most respectful people I ever served, and they tipped well. I only ever had a bad time once, and it was on another theme night. This one was for marines. What the frick? I was pinched, patted, manhandled, pulled onto laps, and called a tease or worse if I didn't go along with it. My opinion of the core changed a lot that night. I was surprised at how many families came to eat there. My single dad used to take me to Hooters all the time as a kid. I liked going for the clams and oysters but looking back he totally used me as a prop to get to dates. I distinctly remember a waitress giving him a frisbee with her name and number written around the rim. I worked at a tilted kilt. Some patrons were a little creepy. Some were really cool regulars. Some were just awkward guys trying to learn how to talk to girls. We had families come in and were more sports oriented. We had one event where former Redskins player Chris Cooley came in to sign autographs. Who let me tell you that Chris Cooley fellow is a frickin douche drip. Douche drip. Vocab plus one. I didn't know what Twin Peaks was the first time I went. I was just looking to grab burger. I was sitting in a booth by myself. The waitress sits next to me, all in my personal space pointing out things on the menu I might like. I give her a look like WTF are you doing? She is all smiles and it suggests some special of the day. I am like yeah whatever and off she goes. It's at that moment I figure out what kind of restaurant this is. I had a few flashes of emotions. Embarrassment. Anger. Acceptance. I ate my burgers left the standard 20% tip and left. Lols. You think that's bad. I was at a conference and took a female employee to one of these types of restaurants. We didn't get it till we sat down and the waitress came over. We were both surprised at how skimpy her outfit was. 10 seconds of looking around later we had a collective OMG moment. I apologized and she laughed it off. Haven't worked at one but have a bad experience taking my mother to one. I remember the first time I went to Tilted Kilt. Told by some friends to go for the good drinks and food. One day I stopped by to visit my mother. She was recently hospitalized for a stroke. I asked if she wanted to go grab dinner at a restaurant and she agreed. Kept asking her where she wanted to go or what she felt like eating but she did the typical mom thing saying wherever I wanted to go. Tilted kilt came to mind so I went there. I had no idea what type of place it was. That is. Until we walked in and were seated immediately, not so busy on Tuesdays, and I looked around and realized the theme was an excuse for short kilts. Also, a requirement for employment in the waitress division were bras sizes C and above. My mother, being the hardcore Christian she was also noticed. I was like hey you know what, maybe we should go to Chili's. As I started to get up she looked me in the eye and said something among the lines like no, we will stay. You desired to come to this place to eat so let's eat. She had that disappointed, judging mother look on her face and a tone like she was going to hit me with a bible. It was awkward and silent that whole dinner. 
Got worse when I made the mistake and ordered some alcoholic beverage with shaken in the title. The server would bring the ingredients to the table and put them in a mixing glass and shake it right in your face for obvious reasons. It was good but I did not order another as I could feel my mother's eyes burning through me. Ride home I got a lecture about finding a nice Christian woman and the sin of premarital sex. Would not recommend. Food was good though. TLDR. Unknowingly took my hardcore Christian mother to dinner at the Tilted Kilt. I worked at a wing house which is pretty much the same as Hooters except our shorts are a little bit shorter. Normally people are super respectful, but once an ex-firefighter pulled me towards him because I was really busy and wasn't giving him enough attention I guess. He wouldn't let me go even after I tried to pull away, which was mildly traumatic. Should have need him in the hose. Speaking of Bree students, I'm romaned off a story of my in-laws. They are not bright people. They were taking a road trip from Illinois to Arkansas to visit my then girlfriend at college and started to get a bit rumbly in the tummy. It was time for lunch. They stopped at what in their seemingly illiterate minds was a Shoney's. Their emotional home. It was an unusual looking Shoney's as it had no windows. But they stepped inside and whoa. Why is it empty? Where is the salad bar? It smells like smoke in here. When did they start installing floor to ceiling poles? And why are the waitresses dancing around them with their tops off? As they realized the gravity of their mistake, a manager greeted them with what I like to imagine was a cheerful welcome to Shomis as they started to turn towards the door. The manager reassured them that Shomis has a great lunch menu. So they stayed. They freaking stayed. An older, very conservative couple went out on the porch and ate chicken sandwiches. And that's the story of how my in-laws ate lunch at a titty bar. Welcome to Shomis. If their mistake was because the building was a former Shoney's, a chain that did have a distinctive look to their buildings in the past, then that's an absolutely hilarious and business savvy name to pick. Some guy came in with his friend. The guy was trying to make it fun for his friend who obviously did not want to be there. It looked like they had just gotten off of work or something. Anyway, so one of the waitresses walks over to take their order, and the guy says I'll have the chicken breast, hold the chicken. Ugh and they left the more superior friend behind. I've seen a lot of people answering with jokes, but not that many with actual answers. I worked at Hooters while on break from school for a year, and then while continuing in medical school for another year. Honestly, I loved it. I was always really nerdy growing up and it was really cool to be treated like I was pretty sexy hot. It helped my confidence a lot too. The customers were generally very nice. Before working at Hooters, my main work experience was working at free clinics as a medical volunteer, and I was sexually harassed way more at the free clinics, and I wasn't paid for it. There are always a few creeps, but I feel like that's going to be true no matter what restaurant you work at. The regulars there generally tried to watch out for us too, and kept people from getting too out of line. The worst part was probably the social stigma I got from people not in the Hooters line of work. My friends and family were pretty judge why and lots of random people felt it was appropriate to start telling me how stupid Hooters girls were, or how that was such a bad job. They would always clarify but I mean, you're different of course. Jux, one of my friend's uncles got mad at me for having Hooters as my employment on Facebook and told me I should change it because people wouldn't know how smart I was and would think I was just a Hooters girl. Working conditions. The managers were all really nice. The girls could get a little sassy, but to be honest they were girls ages 19-21 who were competing for money on the basis of flirting and prettiness it's pretty cutthroat. The kitchen guys were awesome, especially if you could speak Spanish. Lots of the girls are really good people. Most of my co-workers were either college students or moms of young kids, and I'm still closer friends with my former co-workers than I am with any of the people in my class. IDK if anyone has any questions I can answer them but I'm not sure what kind of other info anyone wants. My main work experience was working at free clinics as a medical volunteer, and I was sexually harassed way more at the free clinics, and I wasn't paid for it. Given the clients at health clinics, I want to know who the heck has the self confidence to flirt when they are poor as crap and sick. Never worked at Twin Peaks. I'm a guy, but I remember when there was a Twin Peaks that had just opened across the street from where my dad worked and he kept saying that he heard the food was good and wanted to go. We eventually ended up going, 
My entire family, including my young little brother and I, a prepubescent teen at the time, and we had already sat down by the time it was too late. The waitress came up and everyone at the table looked at how she was dressed and instantly knew what we had gotten into. The girl was practically almost topless, with a small shirt tied between her boobs covering up her nipples. She took our order and we all acknowledged where we were. My parents still didn't even know if I liked girls or not. I do. I just didn't really show it at the time. I would be lying if I said I didn't look at the cleavage of every waitress that walked by. And my brother was just underage for this kind of stuff. So we kind of just awkwardly sat there and ate our food. Trying not to look at the waitresses for too long. Needless to say, we never went back. Not because of the waitresses though, my parents didn't give a crap about that. We never went back because the food was freaking garbage lmao. Biggest plot twist ever. I worked at Hooters for a couple of years. Was actually not that bad. You would get your creepers and some guys get a bit handsy when they are drunk. But you learn to ignore it pretty quickly. I always made a killing with tips. Being one of the bustier girls certainly helped with that. Would also get quite a few offers to buy my panties and bras. Worked at Hooters for about 3 years when I first moved to the city. I had no job when I moved there and walked into a ply and got hired on the spot. It actually wasn't catty at all. The girls were great. Most of the girls were either in college or trying to break into acting. The regulars we had were a blast. The managers were great and honestly the girls there were so much fun to hang out with. It was actually a great experience. We'd get a few creepy guys but the managers would kick them out if you complained. We had this regular that was an older man, like 70-80 that would come in with a younger attractive lady. I figured she was like a niece or granddaughter taking him out. Why I thought this, I don't know I guess I'm super naive. They'd have a few drinks and tip well. Super polite and everyone liked to serve them. They'd come in every few months. They were in my section one day and my shift was ending so they paid up and asked me if I would join them for a drink. Sure, why not? We often did this with regulars. They started taking about their cottage and stuff and I was like oh, they're a couple. I don't even know how they segued into but they started taking about how the old man liked to watch the lady make out with other women in their hot tub and would I like to join them at their cottage. Nope the frick out of there real fast. Welcome to the world of sugar dating. I have a few friends who worked there. Apparently once you accept that you'll be objectified and borderline harassed, you'll make good money cause of tips. Well that is kinda the point. I'm so glad I read this. We're getting a Twin Peaks in my town soon and I was probably going to want to try it at some point. I'm definitely not into Bristol and so I would have had a rude awakening. I was so confused by the scenic views and their slogan on the sign because I live in the suburbs of Detroit. Apparently we need to post a sign our down river. I didn't work at one but worked next door at a Brazilian Radizio next door to a tilted kilt for a while. We closed at 10 and would often go and knock back a few drinks at the kilt after work. If you google the outfit those guys wear your note we kinda look like gay pirates. But here's the deal. Those 10 inches razor sharp knives we used to cut the meat for customers? Yeah those were owned by the gauchos. They were our knives. There's a lot of pride that goes into being a gaucho. Especially where I worked. Your knife is your livelihood. As a result, many of us kept our knives on us to and from work. Normally in a box in the glove box of our car. But on shift and walking to the car, it was in a leather thong strapped to our waist. I tell you this to have you keep in mind that there are 312 guys dressed like gay pirates with long daggers strapped to our waists while drinking at a bar. So most of the girls there seemed to like it. From what they've told me it was more of an Irish themed sports bar with girls half naked serving people. 90% of the clientele was great and often families would come in. The other 10%, well we were present for one situation. One guys apparently thought that ordering cheap drinks gave him the right to a show and pulled a girl's top down. That didn't go over too well with management and they'd already called the police but the guy was getting belligerent and the place didn't have security presence to speak of. But they knew us. And they knew we were friends with the girls. Long story short, armed gay pirates are scary and the cops asked us to please leave the knives in the cars before going to the bar. We didn't pay for a drink the rest of them time I worked there. 
I tell you this to have you keep in mind that there are 3 12 guys dressed like gay pirates with long daggers strapped to our waists while drinking at a bar. Mental image achieved. Couldn't stop laughing for the rest of your post. Currently work at Hooters. I've been there for 5 years. I have a love-hate relationship with the job. I love the people I work with and a lot of the regulars. I make great money and it's a more laid-back environment than any other restaurant I have worked at. However I cannot stand how corporate is running the business. We are no longer allowed to sit with our customers. I get why we are no longer allowed to but as long as you're on top of your crap and are spending equal time with each customer I don't see what the problem is. And they're basically turning us into robots with everything we need to mention to every table. We have to add literally everyone that orders alcohol. We have secret shops and if we don't add in there a shop we get fired. Imagine having to add a 95 year old man. I've been accused of being an idiot because I'm not trying to get fired. As far as customers overstepping boundaries, I've never really had too much of an issue. I've seen it happen. A girl had her butt grabbed and he got kicked out. Another had someone grab her breasts. She threw a beer bottle at him and he got booted out as well. And then there's the one or two regulars that think they're able to make moves because they're regulars. Overall management has our backs when it comes to customers overstepping boundaries or just causing issues regularly. The thing that irritates me, personally, the most is when people automatically assume that we're all a bunch of dumb girls that like to show our tea. I absolutely love when people ask if I'm in school and what I want to do, in a very condescending tone. And I get to throw back at them that I just graduated with a BS in chemistry and I'm currently taking time off before looking for a job. The look on their face is priceless. Suddenly they start talking to me like I'm a normal human being. Like I said, I have a love-hate relationship with my job. For all the crappy parts, the girls and a majority of the customers make up for it. It's just the few that I mentioned that make me hate my job at times. I'm a bartender and get the condescending tone all the time. I've had multiple people tell me they make more than myself and my husband combined. They would never work in that atmosphere or let their wives. Then I tell them my husband is the owner and I'm basically there to have pocket money and they shut up. I hadn't heard of Twin Peaks until I had a Vegas holiday a few years ago. I had heard of Hooters so of course we went there and it was a sad little place. But TP was awesome. As female customers, the waitress still did the sit down at the table thing and it felt really welcoming. I love the lumberjack theme and the rock climbing show. I still have my frozen beer stein. It's nice to hear that they acknowledge that the women eating there may enjoy the same treatment the men do. Oh god you just reminded me of the worst two weeks of my life. Have you ever heard of moxes? I like to tell people to boycott it at all costs. Which is harsh but let me explain. A moxie has opened up in my town. I was 22. I needed fast cash. I heard you could make insane tips. And I'd been working as a server bartender with a background mostly in fine dining for the past 4 years so I figured I'd apply. Even if the dress code was kinda weird. I went to the hiring fair. Was picked up for a bartending role immediately. This is Canada and I'm a tall multi-ethnic looking British redhead so bar is basically my thing. We all went to training together. I guess there were about 50 of us in total. First thing I found weird was that I was required to wear at least 2 inch high shoes while working behind the bar. That's just a freaking death trap. Have you ever slipped on a lemon slice in stilettos? Because I have. It's terrifying. After that I was openly told my shirt wasn't low cut enough and I should wear shorter skirts. I tried explaining that people would be able to see up my skirt when I change kegs or reach down to the fridge for drinks. I was told yeah. We were told we would be doing fine dining service, but everything they told us was wrong. I'm fine dining you do not flirt with male customers in front of their dinner dates. You do not touch your customer's arm and shoulders to make a connection. You do not sit at their table after your shift and drink with them. Jesus freak. The female managers were freaking awful. They were older women and seemed to hate us for it. The environment was unbearably catty. You could not ask these women for help at all. The male managers were worse though. In fact, the final straw for me was watching a middle-aged man put his hands on an 18-year-old's butt to help her walk better in heels. He seemed to think he could teach all of these 18-year-olds how to walk in stilettos. I actually offered to teach them instead but he made up some reason about him being better at it. It was disgusting to watch this level of sexualization be normalized to these young girls. 
For some of them this was their first job. I didn't even make it through training. I slipped on a puddle by the bathroom carrying a load of bar glasses to the dish pit. Fricked up my ankle. Landed in a way that my head ricocheted off the polished concrete floor. And broke all of the glasses. I was helped up by a group of concerned servers. Also in stilettos. And one of the female managers told me just leave. No concern. Just resentment. So I did just leave. I called a cab and went to the air to have my ankle x-rayed and see if I had a concussion. Ankle was fine but I did have a fairly bad concussion. I would never suggest anyone work at Moxie's. It's a cesspool of outdated values. Populated by managers who seem to have Trump-like mentalities when it comes to respecting women. Good to know. I've only been there once a long while ago and remember the food being nothing special. But I'll actively avoid it from now on. I worked at a high-end lounge called the Redhead Piano Bar in Chicago and even though it had a dress code and allowed cigar smoking, it was a classy restaurant. My uniform was a red choker, before they made a recent comeback, a buster, fitted tux jacket, black stockings and heels, no pants. Of course these rich old men would have a few scotches and get a bit touchy, but it was dark and the piano was loud, but luckily we had our blink lights. Part of our uniform was a bright lead pen light, and when we needed to get a bouncer's attention we would repeatedly blink the light in their direction. If we blink because of you, you were thrown out onto the street in a matter of seconds. I currently work at Hooters and I've been there for about 2 years. Management is very important but I have honestly been treated better at Hooters than I have at any of my other jobs. The girls become your best friends. Everyone has this stigma that it's like a strip club but it's like any other family restaurant. It's fun and we are treated in a respectable manner. I would say most customers are very respectful but then there are the few that definitely cross the line. I once caught a guy taking pictures of me and the other girls so I grabbed his phone and he was zooming in and had taken at least 50 pictures of our asses and boobs. I also remember a guy had come in and brought one of the girls a thong. But I mean come on. I deal with crap like this at any other bartending job. Hooters is great. It wasn't too bad actually. I only had a few men. And one woman. Whoever got too explicit. Probably had a phone number left every other shift or sometimes two to three numbers a night. Depending on what other girls were working. I made pretty good money. My last night. I made altogether $400. I had one table with two men leave me $160 but one of the men pretty much manhandled me before he left. It was a fun job all around though. If I wasn't married I would probably go back. I feel like all the people sharing their experiences about accidentally walking into one of these places with their families, not knowing what it was, answers the common question the waitress is posting here keep addressing. Why are there so many families that come in here? Mayo. The worst part about working at Twin Peaks was getting caught up in the Black Lodge. Freaking red curtains and zigzag flooring everywhere. This freaking midget dances up to me and says Gatsu was Nika Phtd so ever blue was uoy. It was a freaking head trip. I do not recommend. He gave me a flyer. Even eht niage. Me and a bunch of friends were backpacking through Europe. And we went to a Hooters in Switzerland. Just for kicks. And because we really wanted a burger and it seemed like the only place where we could do that. D the vibes were not really intense. And around us. There were mostly families and other tourists. The awkward thing I remember was our server asking us tons of questions in a really flirty way. She seemed quite embarrassed and it definitely felt like their management required them to sort flirt with customers. I don't really know if that is a Hooters thing. I worked at Tilted Kilt for about a year during college and it was overall a much more pleasant experience than I had expected. I had worked in a restaurant prior but only had hostessing experience but I lied on my resume and said I had served before. Figured they wouldn't look too much into it. So I got to start right away as a server which was awesome. Serving itself was harder than I thought but so much fun most days. Costumers were usually men on work trips and we definitely had quite a few regulars who were all a little off but very nice and would bring chocolate or coffee for everyone. I had one regular actually give me a 20 when I had told him another table left me nothing on a 100 plus tab. One regular apparently paid for a girl's boob job and I'm a little sad I missed out on that opportunity lol. Girls were shockingly nice and we all looked out for one another. 
Managers didn't put up with balls from any costumers and if we ever felt uncomfortable we were encouraged to let them know. We were also usually walked out to our cars by busser or bar back most nights. My biggest complaints was honestly the uniforms due to the fact they were really uncomfortable. Also had to wear little high heel shoes that made me almost twist my ankles a few times running from table to table. Overall, I loved the experience and and I got to meet some really cool people. 10 stroke 10 would recommend. Kinda related. In Perth, Western Australia back in the 90s, we actually had topless hardware stores for a short while. That was popular while it lasted, but the authorities soon closed the legal loophole that allowed it. The safety? Cashiers of Reddit. What was the worst time you blew up on a customer? I was working at a coffee shop in a busy downtown area. There was a businessman that was notorious for being abusive with our staff. One morning he came in and ordered a coffee and a cranberry scone. We happened to be out of cranberry scones that day, and when I informed him of this he flew off the handle and started swearing at me. I looked him square in the eye and said you're a grown man throwing a temper tantrum over a cranberry scone. Sort your life out. I then calmly turned to the next customer. The next day he apologized and was never a problem again. Some people just need a reality check. At a pawn shop, the lady paid me with a $20 and I gave her change. She flipped up because she knew she'd given me a $100 bill. She screamed, cursed, and called me every name in the book. Just lost her mind. The whole time, she's saying she knew she paid with a $100 bill be she'd just put one in her wallet earlier. I asked her repeatedly to just check her wallet then to see if the $100 bill was still there or not. She just kept yelling she didn't need to check because she knew she'd given it to me. Eventually she checked and all the anger just blew out of her. She was mortified. The $100 bill was there. B. This woman who used to come into the coffee shop I managed was the real world equivalent of Dolores Umbridge. She was smug, obnoxious and delighted in being a giant pain in the butt. She came in daily and had a ridiculously complicated drink order which she was unnecessarily nitpicky about. She came in one day when our grinder was having issues, which I warned her about. I happened to be on register and not on bar and so my employee, who was my best employee at the time, made the drink. She took it and left. The next day she came in and before she even hit the register she announced very rudely in my general direction, you're making my drink, right? I switched places with the person on bar in order to make it, as her drink was so wildly complicated. It took several minutes to make. Throughout which I was told how terrible her drink had been yesterday, how it had ruined her day, how she'd lost faith in the company, etc. I apologized profusely and offered to comp her drink. That was not good enough. She told me she wanted the person who had made her drink before fired. I lost my temper. I more or less told her that I was sorry that her drink was not up to par the day before, but that I had apologized, offered a free beverage and had actually warned her we were having an equipment issue the day before, which was the likely culprit and not my employee. She told me I must have woken up on the wrong side of the bed and I said no, actually you are a giant pain in the butt. Your order is obnoxious and we bend over backwards to accommodate you daily. She had a whole list of things aside from the crazy drink. It had to be served with a certain number of napkins. Her sleeve had 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 coffee umbrage tut tutted her way out of my shop in a huff and I didn't even care if I got in trouble for telling her off. I didn't. Had a customer come in to do a return on a toilet seat. Not to me but the customer service person. She tells him store policy is we don't do returns on seats out of the plastic. He starts telling her he just took it out to check it and it's not the right shape. She repeats store policy and there's no manager here to override it. It's literally impossible for us to return it. He doesn't like this and starts raising his voice and trying to bully her. She's super shy and quiet so she kinda just shut down. The other cashier says very loud it's dirty. He didn't just take it out. He's a liar. He became incredibly angry. I reached over hit her light and said you on break. Go upstairs. She protested but I repeated and she left. He said what did the bee say? I replied don't worry about it. I'll handle it later. We aren't doing your return. 
He starts to protest again but I cut him off I don't care. I don't care what you did or what you have to say. We aren't doing your return today. You've got two options. Take your toilet seat home and come back tomorrow and talk to a manager or take your seat and get out of here. Either way you're leaving here with freaking seat. He left. Managers became required to be there on weekends. And someone bought me some M&Ms. Comma and someone bought me some M&Ms. Nice ending to the story. You did a good job. I work at Disney World. One time I had a particularly rude guest, and the end I told them to have a great day, not a magical day. Whoa, that's pretty hardcore. This wasn't me, but I was involved. When I was in high school I worked at a shoe store, the one with that freaking prize wheel from heck. We did this buy one get one half off sale all the time. The way it works is you buy a more expensive pair and you get the cheaper of the two half off. Otherwise we'd lose money. So this woman comes in and buys two pair of kids shoes. Looks at the receipt and thinks that $50 is too much for her smaller child. So she returns them. She then proceeds to flip out because the difference for the other pair came out of the refund. I called the manager and he came up and she says he's a foster kid. He's not worth a $50 pair of shoes. Stop trying to rob me and give me my freaking money so manager refunded her the entire bill and took both pair of shoes and walked off. We all gave her the silent treatment until she left. Angrily, I feel bad for both children and her husband who were just standing there quietly. He's a foster kid. He's not worth a $50 pair of shoes. Stop trying to rob me and give me my freaking money. And this is when you call CPS and notify them of that. Or at least threaten to write in front of her. Back when I worked admissions for a popular tourist attraction in Hollywood. Guest hands me a coupon. $8 off per ticket. M.E. Your total is $44. Guest, you forgot to include the coupon. M.E. I included the coupon. Ticket is $30. I point to the sign next to me. So for the two of you that's 60. Minus 8 and minus 8 again is $44. Guest, did you include the coupon? M.E. I included the coupon. $30 per ticket. Two tickets is $60. Minus $8 and minus $8 is $44. Guest, 16. M.E. Right. I took 16 off. Guest, no. Ticket price is $16. M.E. No. It's $22 with the coupon. Guest, how much is the regular ticket price? M.E. $30. Guest, Coupon is for how much? M.E. $8 off. Guest, right. So that brings the price down to 16. M.E. Um, no it doesn't. Guest, $30 minus $8. Right, M.E. Yes. Guest, 16. M.E. Number, $22. Guest, forget it. What's my total? M.E. $44. Guest, did you include the coupon this time? M.E. Yes. Guest, how does it come to $44? M.E. Ticket price is $30. You gave me a coupon for $8 off, which brings the price down to 20. Guest, 16. M.E. 22. There are two of you. Two tickets comes to $44. Guest, did you include the coupon? M.E. Yes. Guest, how much is the ticket? M.E. $30. Guest, what about the coupon? M.E. Coupon brings it down to $22. Guest, not $16? M.E. Not $16. Guest, why not $16? M.E. Because that's not what math is. At that point I genuinely would have pulled out a piece of paper and drawn 30 little lines and crossed out 8 and asked him to count. SMH. I was a server years ago and this woman, usually a pretty nice lady, comes in and apparently we had messed up her salmon a few days prior so the manager had given her a free meal card which is good for one single meal. Well a few days later she comes in with at least 15 people about an hour before we closed and they all order seafood and steak and wine and her whole party is awful to me and my friend who is another server. One guest even threw his plate on the ground breaking it and throwing food all over because his steak was overcooked. After all of this the other server went to take the woman her check and it was a couple hundred dollars and she whips out the free meal card. The server takes it to the register comps one of the meals off and comes back with the new total and the woman loses it. I have a free meal card. This was one meal for all of us. 
it should be free and the server just stiffens up and politely explains that that isn't how it works and stresses that she had to have known that she couldn't have brought 15 people in here and expected free meals for everyone. The woman stands up and pours her red wine all over my friend and my friend just goes what the frick and runs to the back to get the manager. She kept her calm honestly but the manager flipped and told her to get the heck out and never come back. That was a crazy night. I would have freaking choked that lady out if she poured wine on me. The day I quit my job last year, I knew in the morning I was quitting that day and in the morning one of the bitchiest customers came in complaining about a product not working. Yet again, this was just a regular occurrence that happened with this particular customer. After about half an hour I just told her to go and frick herself and I can be asked listening to her anymore. I then proceeded to call my boss and tell him I quit. Can't wait for that to happen to me. I had a guy come through my register once wanting to put some stuff on his store credit card. He didn't have the card or any id so I couldn't ring him through. Technically I could but against SOP. He started screaming at me saying that everyone knew him there and that he was a regular. I was at my job for over a year and never saw that man once in my time working there before this incident. I told him no I couldn't ring him through without the card or it but I could hold his stuff at register until he comes back. He proceeded to get more belligerent and in my face so I told him in an assertive tone you need to leave. You can't be yelling at staff. He leaves then comes back an hour later to buy his stuff but still no it or card. I proceed to tell him I can't ring him in a game so he starts screaming bloody murder wanting the asm to come. Stupid asm has no spine and tells me to ring the guy through then goes back to the floor or wherever he was before. As soon as the asm left, I told the customer to leave and that he wasn't welcome at the store anymore. I never saw him again after that. When I worked at Subway in high school there was this guy in his 30s that came in with his wife almost every day. He was a dong and talked to you like an idiot. Not because he was in a bad mood either, because he thought it was funny to be and up to kids working fast food jobs. One day I had enough and took his sandwich I was in the middle of making and spiked it into the garbage can and told him to frick off. He told me I couldn't talk to customers that way and I told him I just did you retard. He called the owner and dropped my name. We had name tags, and she told him that if I blew up on him like that it was probably deserved and asked him to not return. I for sure thought I was fired. Lucky for me the owner knew exactly what customer she was talking to and knew me good enough to know it takes a lot to get me irritated and that I wouldn't do something like that for no reason. That's awesome the owner responded. More employers should stand up for their employees like that. I worked at a sandwich place for a year or so and had multiple bad experiences with customers. But this one takes a cake. I was making this dude a hot chicken sandwich. I bring the sandwich up to the front and try to hand it to him. He just looks at me for a second then proceeds to scream and swear at me for spitting in his sandwich. I didn't spit in his food kinda wish I did though. And told him this over and over. The dude was yelling at me for probably 5 minutes. I was patient with him and gave him a new sandwich made by a different employee and totally refunded his order. But this dude decided that he wanted to be a dong so he hung around the store telling customers I was going to spit in their food and swearing a ton. I waited for my manager to step forward and kick the guy out but he was just pretending nothing was going on. Finally as I was making food for this family with really young kids, who were obviously uncomfortable with this dude's language. I freaking lost it. I slammed down the knife I was using. Startling everyone because I had been so respectful to this guy for so long. And screamed we are a family friendly establishment so you can quit being an butthole and get the heck out of this store for whatever reason that worked and he left cussing me out. I apologized to the family for the guy and for my swearing at him. I very nearly lost my job from that and got a long lecture from my boss about how the customer is always right and that I need to be respectful. Luckily my manager vouched for me, saying that I was extremely respectful until the guy started making other customers uncomfortable. I quit that job a few months later glad to be done with Dunbar's customers. I carded a woman trying to buy cigarettes who got really bitchy when I didn't just give it to her. It was in her car so she left and came right back. When I held my hand out for it she tried to fling it at my face and missed. It fell on the floor behind the counter and I refused to pick it up. I called for next customer and started ignoring her. 
When she asked for it back I gave her permission to come around the counter to get it. It was petty, but in the moment I wasn't gonna budge. She called the cops and said I stole it. When they came I explained what happened. He gave her a really annoyed look and she yells make him give it to me then looks back to me. He literally ordered me to pick it up. I'd honestly rather lose my job but I was afraid of what would happen if I refused an officer. So I picked it up and gave it to her. She got the satisfaction of winning and got to leave with a big smug look on her face. Afterwards the officer apologized and said he was basically afraid of upsetting her. I was dangerously close to calling him a P. Should have flung it back like she did. I don't know how fast food places find workers. People are so rude to them. It blows my mind. It's almost like some people go to fast food places with the mindset that they are going to be buttholes. Oftentimes they can't find workers, or they burn through them really quickly. The ones left are just the ones broken, desperate, or masochistic enough to stay. Source. Cashier at a fast food place. I honestly don't remember this, but my co-workers do, and apparently was a customer yelled at me, go to huck and I yelled back, I'll see you there my sis and I say this to each other a lot, for funsies, and it's the only reason I believe I may have said this to have said this to have said that but one I did remember was a customer brought up a sandwich that apparently looked awful to her, she held it out to me and said, would you eat this and without missing a beat I said, yes, that shocked her into silence for a good few seconds. I was being honest, the sandwich looked fine to me. LOL siblings and friends are great practice for when you really have to get into it with someone. I work on customer services in a retail shop, and have to do a lot of refunds. It's the store policy that we don't refund anything unless the customer has a receipt. So I have to deal with a lot of angry customers, if they really pee me off. When they walk off I do a tannoy reading out the policy so they hear it as they leave the shop. Oh my god that's so petty and I love it. I never blew up on a customer that I remember, but one time I showed up to my crap job at Delarama in the morning. In the evenings the staff is supposed to put away all the misplaced product back on the shelves. Facing I think it was called. We would organize it by aisle then take each basket and put everything away. Standard stuff. Anyway I show up in the morning and it's only me and my b-boss, entitled and disrespectful. There were supposed to be 5 of us for the shift but we had 3 no-shows or sick call-ins. All the merch from the night before that was supposed to be put away was still not done. So it was only me and my boss, with extra work from the night before. Luckily it wasn't too busy but my boss decides that she'll sit on register, with no customers, while I put away all the merch from the night before. Fine. She has seniority and I'd rather be doing something than nothing. I finish one basket and as I'm coming back for the other nine she has the gull to say you're not done yet. Could you hurry it up? You are welcome to grab a basket. Freaking C. Delarama seems like the worst place in Canada to work. I was a manager of a CVS and during an extremely busy time of the day I open up the photo lab register to help the regular cashiers keep the lines down. I announced that I am open and the nearest customer happily took her merkind eyes to my register. Then the second nearest customer started loudly saying that she was first and it her turn. I said she will be the next after I take care of this customer. When it was her turn she started going off on me that it was rude of me to not help her. Blah blah blah. I ignored her as much as possible. She kept going on and on until I said lady I opened this register as a favor so the wait time would be shorter. If you would rather wait in one of the regular register lines you are more than welcome. She was shocked that I talked back to her. She didn't realize that I was the manager. She found one of the employees who was stocking a shelf in the candy aisle and demanded that she speak to a manager. That employee called for a manager over the intercom and I happily walked over to candy aisle to see her waiting for a manager. With a big smile on my face I'll let her know I was the manager on duty. She walked out of the store without saying a word. I was off work like an hour later but apparently she sent her husband in looking for me but I was at home by then. They complained to corporate. I was told to not take my job so personally and that was it. This woman was acting like a rude bee. She was a regular, not in a hey, how are the kids way but in a crap here comes this lady and her loud kids again way. 
she was normally tolerable. This day, she decided to have an attitude while I was still with the customer ahead of her, by slamming her few items down on the belt and saying because her time is obviously more precious than ours. I finish with my customer and she starts talking about sales and how prices were wrong, having a tone. I refused change any prices, more attitude and she said she should call the manager, but was in a hurry so she pulled her $20 bill out of her bra and unfolded and it and held it out for me to take. I just looked at her, disgusted, I can't take that, why not immediate rage, I can't take money from your underwear, what, it's my bra, that's your underwear, I'm not like a dirty person, I don't know that, her eyes lit up, where is your manager, where is, man soul manager, comma man our soul manager, doesn't work at night anymore and he's not my manager, I'm his supervisor, I'll take your money right now, but next time I won't take anything from your underwear, I took it by pinching the corner of it, tossing it under my drawer, dramatically, as not to mix it with my clean money, gave her her change and told her to have a nice day, she was pee, livid even, I was so sick of that job at that point, I ended up quitting a few months later, I had a reputation as an angel, I was pretty much a pushover with customers, that day I was just done, so that's the worst I ever treated a customer, lol. Oh man the sweaty bra money is the worst, I had a woman legit pull her tit out of her bra looking for lost bra money, just faulty out in the middle of the store. I only ever lost it on a customer once, when I was working at an office supply store, customer was one of those self important money pusher types. Came in during the lunch rush on a day when we were short handed. He wanted to buy our phone. I normally would have helped him, but I was stuck on register. I did everything I could to help this guy anyway. When I was finally able to focus on him exclusively, he launched into a lecture along the lines of how he specifically was the most important person in the store. And I lost it. I barely remember what I said to guy. I know I tried to walk away first, but he pushed it. I ended up tearing into him so badly he basically ran from the store, and the assistant manager on duty was too stunned to do anything about the incident. I hated that job. Quit, not long after. Not a cashier exactly, but a bartender. There was a hotel next to the restaurant bar I worked at, which often would bring in crews of construction workers and other types of traveling workers. Most behave themselves just fine and some of my favorite regulars were seasonal workers who stayed next door. There were crass, classless individuals from time to time, though, usually a quick comment that they're in a restaurant, not a sports bar, was enough to calm them down, but not this group. They came in on a Friday, were loud, rude and vulgar, making passes at waitresses and irritating other guests. I ended my shift while they were still there, and when I arrived the next day, was informed that they followed a waitress out to her car, and wouldn't let her leave. They blocked her from getting into her car, and when she finally was able to get past them, they stood in front of her car and jeered, making rude gestures and remarks. Eventually the kitchen guys came out, and they left. They showed back up the next night, and I was instructed to deal with them if they can back after the GM went home, which of course they did. So we started with the usual deal, you are not welcome back due to your behavior, Please leave etc. The foreman, or whatever he was, insisted it was all a joke, and that I needed to get a sense of humor. His exact words were you need to go to the dollar store and buy a sense of humor, whatever that means. So this goes on for a bit, he actually had the gall to ask for a refund for the previous night. I declined, and as this conversation continued, I began to lose my patience. The guy got more belligerent, and insulting and repeated his weird dollar store comment multiple times. I finally lost my patience roughly the 400th time he said this, and said the dollar store. Ha, huh, is that where you get your dental work done? You have 10 seconds to get the heck out of this bar before I call the cops. I could tell this was a sore spot for him, as he looks like he chewed rocks every day for breakfast. He deflated quickly, as several patrons and most of the wait staff witnessing this laughed at him openly. He left quietly and did not come back. Clearly he thought the dollar store comment was a clever thing to keep bringing up. It only got clever the one time you threw it back at him. Kinda shows how cheap his humor is. Literally. Worked at a sandwich shop. I get assigned to train a new girl. 
who is shadowing me at my register. A big pissy woman comes in with two other gentlemen and she orders a croissant sandwich with no tomatoes. Sub avocado. I proceed to try and explain to her that I can't do that, as tomatoes and avocado are not equivalent. I don't even get that far cause she interrupts me, starts to mock the way I was talking to her, tells me that they've done it for her before. I stand my ground and tell her regardless if someone else had done it before. I wasn't going to because that's now how it works. I was trying to make a point to my trainee. She gets so angry, say some crap to me, then looks at my trainee and says don't learn from her. Cynthia, she's a bad one. She then struggles to pay with her card cause she's broke apparently, and gives me lip when I tell her card was declined. When she walks away, the two gentlemen she's with come up to me and apologize for her. I was so checked out. I just said you're the one who has to deal with her every day, not me. Savag Jahaha. I had already put my two weeks in at the gas station when a woman comes with a van and tries to pump gas with the vehicle running. I tell her over the intercom to shut the engine off. She started to argue with me over the intercom and I just turned it off to deal with the small lineup inside. She comes inside and starts arguing with me. I calmly told her the rules are for safety, and if she wants to fuel while the engine is on, she can try another gas station. She starts screaming telling me I'm just being a bee to ruin her day. I just snapped in front of everybody and yelled back oh really? Am I in your place of business harassing you for following the rules so people don't freaking explode to which all of the other customers laughed. She kept arguing back so I said fine. Go fill your tank. As soon as she was outside I locked the doors. I told the customers they could leave if they wished by pushing the black handle. Nobody did until the irate customer sped off. Computer repair guys, what is the craziest stuff you have seen on a customer's computer? I was a manager at computer repair for a retailer a couple year ago. We had a client's computer in the back running various malware and virus scans. I was doing morning paperwork in the back near the computer. This PC had its screen saver on displaying random photos from the my pictures folder. Various family members, children's birthday parties the usual stuff. Then from then off my eye I swear to god I saw a picture of a woman from the shoulders up with her throat cut. As soon as I realized what I was making out I directed my full attention and it was back to photos of a car show. As the day went on I though nothing of it and proceeded continue my work until I was bringing another customer's PC to the back to work on and again from my peripheral I could have sworn I saw a bloody body inbound in a trunk of a car. At that moment I began to freak out. I grabbed one of my employees explained to him the situation. We then sat for 10 minutes and watched this screensaver. It is against company policy to search through the client's personal files without absolute just cause. We then proceeded to see a photo two bodies in a shallow grave out in the woods and another photo of a severed hand down in kitchen drawer. I then went and got the general manager and informed him of the situation and had him view this screen saver. We then felt that I would be in everyone's best interest to contact law enforcement. In about 15 minutes later owner of the computer and another gentleman show up I proceed to tell him that his computer is not ready and it will be a while. He then informs me that he was called there because someone reported there was some photographs of a grisly murder that we had found. I showed him his computer and then his partner then begins to laugh at him. Apparently he went against police policy and took some of his work home with him and had never noticed his work photos were being used as a screen saver. TLDR a detective unknowingly brings me his computer filled with gory homicide pictures that get mixed in with his screen saver. I soil myself thinking I am dealing with a murder. Call the cops and the detective returns to investigate his own computer. Oh crap Alonzo, I got them pictures from the you know what is my screen saver. No worries Jake, I've got a plan. I was approached by a mutual friend, asking if I could assist her with a very delicate issue. Her brother had recently committed suicide, didn't leave a note, and they needed a user password removed to search the computer for any answers. I said I could help and told her to bring it to the shop. Why couldn't the police handle this I don't know. The next day, she brought it in an evidence bag, along with gloves, and instructed me to wear them while handling it. When I took it out of the bag, I noticed some dried blood on the casing of the laptop. Then I opened it up. To this day, I'd say the craziest thing I've seen on a customer's computer is brain matter. The laptop had been nearby and open when he shot himself.
I retract the previous winner, you win. Normal looking guy turned in his desktop for repair, booted up to see the desktop image of a car with a lizard man having sex with the exhaust and another lizard man jizzing on the hood. A guy had a folder entirely dedicated to toilet part, from what I can tell. He would lay a massive crap in the bog then use pink or blue toilet paper or whatever to make a rose like flower around the turd in the bowl. It was weird because the wet paper actually looked kinda pretty and rather rose like, they were big and took up the entire bowl. However the crap center of each kinda ruined the magic. I have pretty much zero idea why anyone would do such a thing let alone photograph it. The internet needed those images. We are poor without them. One fairly trailer trashy gentleman brought in his Windows 98 PC, this was around 2008, and his wallpaper was a rather portly nude black woman who he informed me was his ex-girlfriend. He brought in the computer several times throughout the next few months, all for silly questions about how to use the dang thing, and since we do a free checkup at the counter I had to look, every time his wallpaper was the same nude woman in a different pose. The last time he came in I booted it up and the wallpaper was a mirror shot of him at full mast, holding himself. I unplugged the power cable immediately, there were people behind him, gave his computer back and told him not to come back to my shop, ever. And now we have a policy of not touching anything running an old OS because the people who do tend to be crazy. Child P. Twice. Both guys were arrested. One time I was checking out a lady's AOL email issue, it was no big deal, she was done and out in just a few hours. A week later I get a call from her stating that we logged into her adult friend finder account and changed things. She was thoroughly embarrassed by it and was pressing charges. Police called to take a statement and we mostly just laughed about how there's no way anyone would have known she used F if she hadn't bitched and made a gigantic scene. She was also a lawyer. Nothing came of it. I see nudes on a near weekly basis and I don't even look for them. In fact I've had a few couples bring in their failed external hard drives begging me to save their homemade pee. One couple made it very clear that it was okay to look. I guess that was just their thing because they paid me to hook up the hard drive, which was perfectly readable, and then copy everything to another hard drive. I work in a cowboy village where people sometimes ride up on a horse with a laptop in the snowbag. TL. DR. Obscene dong picture wallpaper on an ancient machine. Child P. Child P. Crazy lawyer on adult friend finder. Voyeuristic amateur P makers. Cowboys with laptops. Honestly most interested in the cowboys W laptops. Child P on desktop. As desktop background. And a screensaver. It was an interesting day at work. Had to poker face it when the police came over and arrested him as he was picking up the machine. There was a research chemist computer that was infected with malware. I was doing a scan of his computer and there was like 10 minutes of P titles being scanned on our malware scanner. But it was so organized. There were folders like BSDM, lesbian, bestiality, straight, interracial, masturbation, insertion, etc. Then there were subfolders like, Japanese, ebony or vegetables, sports equipment. But this was the most organized pea collector I've ever seen. Ah yes, ebony or vegetables. Easily the time I picked up an old CRT monitor off of a desk, to reveal a half-eaten McDonald's burger from years past. Not as much mold as you'd think. Ha ha ha. Silly rabbit. That's not food. While working for a university IT department, I had the distinct displeasure of opening up the C drive on a professor's computer. The display default was set to large thumbnails and the only things at C were folders and one big naked mirror shot of himself. Come to find out he was big on the dating sites, got himself a mail order bride from Brazil, and this was what he thought enticed people. TL. DR. Naked shots of 60 year old male tax professor. Kinda the same thing happened to us, on our department shared drive, one of the researchers had a nude shot of him and his wife, gross. My flatmate was fixing up and backing up a police officer's laptop, on the desktop was a file with a list of all the known suspected drug users and dealers in my town. CP, and I'm not talking about jailbait, he had what looked like a naked 7 year old girl as his freaking desktop. He's in jail now. At my last IT job, 
I loaned my work laptop to our general manager because he needed it to make a presentation on a business trip. This was back in the late 90s when laptops were still making their way into our company. He returned it a few days later with AOL dial-up installed. In the process of removing it from my laptop, I noted the plethora of Asian ladderboy downloads and web history. I never mentioned it to him. I was too embarrassed. I mean, what kind of sick bastard uses AOL? Ah the old reddit kangaroo. I was working on my XGFS, younger sister's computer. If I remember correctly, I was just removing malware and giving it a bit of a cleaning. I found two videos that were roughly a half hour each, of her and her BF having sex. I felt a bit guilty for watching them, but we were close in age and, well, frick you, I could not not watch them. In one of the videos, very shortly after they finish up and the camera is still recording, you can hear her roommates yelling up to her, telling her that someone was at the door for her. Keep in mind this is 60 some odd seconds after a quite impressive 30 minute romp. She gets dressed in seconds flat and grabs a framed picture and runs downstairs. That picture now hangs in my home. I was the person at the door, picking up the picture she had gotten for me. It's like a pornographic twilight zone. Got a help desk ticket one day saying some computer was unable to boot. Went over to it, opened it up, and found two fresh oranges. Worked tech support for Dell a few years ago. Remotely logged into a client's computer to fix his email problem. Turned out he was a UN diplomat. From some African country I think. Let me walk right into the UN's internal mail system. Saw nothing good. Just memos. Meeting minutes. ETC. They use that craptastic Lotus Notes browser client. Guy was a total dong too. I kinda felt like he was showing off by letting me see. He was so important he had to repeatedly remind you with his attitude. I work at a college university and I have seen some of the most distinguished professors here in the act on their work computers. What kind of an educated idiot makes the decision to take their homemade pee and place it on their work machine? Also, kiddy pee. Apparently that's the only way for someone with tenure to get fired. Oh, the stories I could tell. Tell. Was asked to try and get an old, 10 years plus, laptop working. When that failed, the lady asked me to smash it up in the garden. On doing this, a number of earwigs crawled out. Weirdest thing in a computer. You could say, sunglasses. It had a few bugs. I'm sure everyone in tech support has their pee stories, but my worst was pretty bad. I work in my college's IT department. Some kid brings in his desktop, tells us it's slow and he needs office installed. He fills out the forms, and we get around to it about half an hour later. It took 10 minutes to boot. His desktop was a slideshow of nothing but hardcore P. Internet Explorer shortcut, renamed to P. Inside IE. He had 4 different third party toolbars and at least 20 bookmarks for P sites. After dubbing it the Pornado and chuckling over it, and changing the desktop so our boss wouldn't get P at us, we ended up clearing out 19 various pieces of malware, including 2 rootkits. It's still a running joke to compare other sketchy computers we see to the mighty Pornado. We also do backups for students that need to have their OS reinstalled or have their entire drive reimaged. Not only do we end up with terabytes of movies, which the sneakier technicians load onto thumb drives and take home because frick you are IAAMPAA, but I have accidentally stumbled across more homemade P featuring people I know than I want to think about. Probably the worst ever though was a laptop we got in from some really creepy skinny dude. He reeked. The laptop reeked more. The laptop reeked so badly that my boss shouted at me from across the room as soon as the guy was gone to take care of it somewhere else. This wasn't just a biological reek. This was something rank and foul like I have never smelled in my life. I opened it up and the keys were sticky. I disinfected my hands, sealed it in a bag, and we sent it to the manufacturer. Two weeks later we got a letter telling us it had been discarded at a class something or other biohazard. We notified the guy via email and never saw him again. Thank god. There are some other sketchy ones, like the 22 year old chick, in student government, dean's list, popular, well liked, etc, who had harry potter slash fiction pop up as her most searched item when we went to google to see if she had internet access, but these are the best I can think of right now. 
I knew someone in college that actually fits the description of the last one. Her honors thesis was on Harry Potter fandom and fanfic. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Sometimes it's Neville's turgid member. I used to work for Verizon Wireless. This hot girl buys a new phone from me. Wants all her data for from the old to the new. So I hook her phones up to the computer and hit go. I can see the computer screen. All my co-workers behind me can also. The girl however can not see it. And it starts to sphere her pictures. Normal looking ones at first. Then suddenly there she is naked. Then more naked. Then in very hardcore poses. Then there are things inside her. And on. And on for like 5 minutes. There had to be 200 pictures on that phone. 180 of them are naked pictures of her. Before I knew it everyone I work with is standing behind me drooling. I don't think the girl realized we could see what it transfers. Why can you even see that? Or why would it be necessary to see it? Oh. A friend of mine used to fix computers. One guy complained of his computer not working and brought it in. Child P was discovered. Cops were called. P-O-File arrested. That is something I hope I will not have to deal with. Old lady had her cable modem behind a big desk. Could never unplug it as needed for a power cycle. She ended up putting it and her router on a clapper. This wins. The time I was on site moving data from a 14 year old girl's failing desktop drive to her laptop drive. Saw that the transfer was hanging on a gigantic movie. Opened it up to see if it was important. And saw her flashing her boobs over and over again. She was in the room. It would have been far more awkward had the screen been in her line of eyesight but. Luckily, it wasn't. And, you two are now on a federal what cliss somewhere. I did computer repair as my own business for probably 4 plus years. So I have a ton of stories I could share. But this one always stands out. A little backstory. My clientele was mostly old people. Age 50 plus. Most of the problems they had were pretty basic. Printer drivers, speed up their computer, hook something new up for them. Pretty basic stuff. Sometimes people had viruses, but surprisingly it was a pretty rare occurrence. One day, one guy who I had done some work for a few times before called me over. He was a retired pastor, with his wife of 50 years and many children and grandchildren. Mostly what I did for their family was install some software, check on some settings, that type of thing. This day, however, he told me that he had a strange problem. Every few days he would get faxes for advertisements for gay age. Hum. That's kind of odd. I told him to make sure his fax number wasn't on the web anywhere, and if so get it removed if possible. Otherwise, maybe it would be best to change their fax number. Each successive time I went over to his house after that, though, it got worse. The next time he needed me to install an internet filter because sometimes he had gay thoughts and didn't want to be tempted to look at gay pee. Okay, little weird, but I installed the filter and figured maybe he had just accidentally viewed it and as a religious person, never wanted that to happen again. So a few times later, I'm helping him set up his email in Outlook. And I ask him if he can type in his password. He says he has to look it up. So he opens up a Word document which has all his passwords. I had already told him that was probably a bad idea. But you can't force these people to do anything. So as he is scrolling up his Word document. I notice that he's scrolling past a lot of text. A lot of text. As I glance over. I notice it's men for men on Craigslist. Ones he's posted. Ones he's responded to. Talking about all sorts of uh, interesting things. He finds his password. And at this point I just want to get out of there. But as we finish setting up Outlook. Mail comes streaming in. Tens. Hundreds. Maybe even a thousand Craigslist postings. Emails. Responses. And more. So that's when I finally connect all the dots. The gay faxes. The gay p. The men for men. And here he is. A retired pastor. Smiling at me next to his wife of 50 years, with his kids and grandchildren pictured in frames all around him. I didn't know what to do, so I just stopped doing repair for them. I was worried what I would find out next. The more I read these stories the more I become convinced that you guys find yourselves doing some private investigating against your will. I used to be the manager for the technical department in a CompUSA, fairly large computer retailer. 
We had a guy bring in his desktop at the end of the day and say that it wouldn't boot and he didn't know why, but that it was under warranty and would like it repaired. My technician said he seemed kind of nervous and that he smelled just like a car air freshener. The tech told him it would be looked at tomorrow, and we'd call him with an estimate before doing anything beyond the diagnostic work. The next morning when I came into the shop the whole place smelled strange, and it seemed to be emanating from the rack of incoming devices. The PC that came in at the end of the previous night seemed to be the cause. So I had a technician put the PC on the bench and try to boot it. It wouldn't post, or even give indication that it was getting power. So he opened the lid, and that's when it got really bad. It smelled terrible inside of the case, kind of like rotten asparagus, burnt sulfur and vinegar, with a slight hint of pine trees. At this point I tell the tech to move it off to the side, and work on something else because I want to get more info from the customer. I called the guy and asked him what actually happened to the computer, stating that it smelled like chemicals and I didn't want my tech touching it until we knew what we were dealing with. After balking initially. He finally told me that his wife had opened the case and pee inside his computer because she had found his pee collection and she didn't like pornography. He had drained it out, and then sprayed it with Lysol and let it set for a day before bringing it to us. After a few moments of silence due to my internal screaming of WTF, the customer breaks the silence and asked when it would be fixed. I started laughing. And then I calmly explained that manufacturer warranties don't cover urine damage, and that he had until the end of the day to pick up his dead computer or it was going into the trash. That was when I decided that retail management wasn't for me, and got into IT consulting about 3 months later. TL. DR. Guy pisses off wife and she pee in his computer, which is not covered under warranty repairs. Not exactly on the computer, but this one always makes me laugh. Way back in the day when the ATX motherboard first came out a customer bought one, if you recall, they weren't a perfect rectangle like now, but were sort of L shaped, I don't know how to describe it, but it wouldn't fit in there at case, so, they simply sawed off the other part of the motherboard, after all, it had the SCSI controller on it, their drives were right, so they didn't need that, then the screws didn't line up, so he drilled a hole and tried to hold it in with a sheet rock screw and glue. We know this because he brought it in to try and return it. One of those things I'll never forget. Good times. Well, the pee thing, of course. Although that was always kind of awkward because I'm a chick and guys were always like, yeah, I, UHH, you know, whatever. But two stories trump all my others. One, a guy came in with a desktop computer and said that he couldn't get it to work. I put it on our counter and started hooking it up to the monitor to see what he was talking about. When he sees me doing this, he says, Oh, I need a monitor I laughed a little, thinking he was trying to be funny. He was not trying to be funny. He thanked me, grabbed the computer, and left. I just stood around awkwardly while I processed what had just happened. 2. A mother comes in with her teenage daughter to transfer what was on the girl's old computer to her new laptop. The mother felt the need to go on about what a great kid her daughter is. This girl looked like a grimy ass, but whatever. We're transferring everything, and her pictures included shots of her and her boyfriend having sex. Not really shocking, until we see a close-up of her crotch and she had her boyfriend's name shaved into her pubic hair. Her boyfriend's name was Tito. Grimy ass indeed. I've been a student at worker at my university for about 3 years, and I have to say, the craziest thing I've seen was a laptop of a male student who had pictures of his naked girlfriend all over the desktop, who also sat down next to me while I was fixing his computer and acted like there was absolutely nothing awkward or wrong. Peas. First post 2. Yay. I had to repair a laptop for a friend. His complaint was that it gave him a lot of blue screens. Did a quick check of the basics, and nothing seemed out of order. I updated all I could, let it run in overnight, and still no errors. Strange, the next day, I returned it to him and asked when do you get these blue screens. He hesitated for a sec, and said well, when I watch pee on you porn. I went to you porn, and surely, his system crashed. Assuming it was something to do with flash player or a video related issue, I checked YouTube. But no errors there, the errors were only occurring on you porn. I was on the verge of giving up, 
until I realized I hadn't done a disk check yet. I ran check disk, and the result was surprising. Apparently the disk location of a view porn cookie had an error, causing the crashes. The first time ever I encountered someone's computer broke because he was watching too much pee. I helped a friend build a computer, but he wanted to keep his big HDD, which was fine with me. He told me that I could go through and purge most of his files in a folder called pictures, which was a 52.3 GB folder. I had a look in for a lark. I know hat I shouldn't have, I'm sorry, and I found a folder. 17 GB, that was normally invisible and password protected by a program called Folder Loca. Inside was 17 GB of hardcore furry pee and clop. At least it was supposed to be hidden. Most people just leave porno on their desktops apparently. This wasn't crazy in itself, but in combination with what he brought the computer in to be repaired for it was. He had a bunch of viruses and tracking cookies from pee sites, and his background was the 10 commandments. I'm not really sure how it would feel to go from looking at Peter looking at thou shalt not commit adultery. A buddy of mine I work with went over to the local catholic church to install some print drivers for their copier. With the priest standing over his shoulder, he opens the downloads folder and is greeted by 100 or so p videos. The priest doesn't even flinch. He said it was most uncomfortable he had ever felt. Bugs. As in little white things running in between the keys, in and out of the keyboard. Yup that one got sealed in a plastic bag and disposed. A couple interesting ones in my years. Not a PC, but I used to work for a company with many many laser printers. I got a call that one smelled really bad, so I went to check it out. Sure enough, smelled like crap. Took it down to the shop to tear it down and clean it and inside we found several dead mice. We threw that nasty thing away. I once worked on a PC in and that was so filled with dirt and dust that the entire case was filled. Not just a little film or a ball of dust. The whole case was filled with that nasty fuzz dirt dust crap. Nasty. As you can probably guess the board had blown several caps and was causing rebooting. I once worked on a PC for a friend and had to reload his OS. He asked me to move his pictures and such over, but kindly asked that I not look at them. Of course I intended to oblige, but through a series of unintended consequences I ended up seeing thumbnails of some of his photos, many of which were his wife involved in an all African American gangbang. They are a white couple, I suppose she had a fetish. Middle aged married man and his wife dropped off a deck stop with a failing hard drive. The man insisted that I do everything I could to recover data from the nearly dead drive. We went through the trouble of getting some dry ice and keeping it frozen while we transferred the data. It worked. The drive started to read and copy. What was on the drive? 300 gigs of raw. Nasty HD quality gay P. He paid $400 for us to recover the data. His wife didn't know. Three years ago when I was still in school, a guy I knew brought his tower to school for me to fix. I took it home, opened it up, and god dang. It was full of used fapkins and two dead mice. I put on three pairs of rubber gloves cleaned it all out, got the PC working again and took it back to school. Gave the guy his used fapkins and dead mice back in a clear plastic bag for all to see. I was cleaning up a customer's computer. Just the basic stuff like clear temp files and stop certain programs from running on startup. Well when I deleted their temp files they had 30 gigs of temp files, and a desktop full of random pictures and files. Once worked on a PC with an inch of dust on the inside, and a 160 GB hard drive filled with IE temporary internet files. A C cleaner had to be left on overnight. A customer just tried to walk out of the restaurant I work at with a table. What's the weirdest thing you've seen a customer do? I once saw a woman in Staples use one of those large paper cutters to slice her hair off. She laid her head down looking sideways with her long hair strewn all over it and slice. There goes half her hair. Cheap and effective haircut. I was working drive through Friday night in a college town. And the car at the window suddenly throws his car in reverse and rams the guy behind him. That guy then rams the car at the window, and then gets rammed by the car behind him. The three cars played bumper cars for a little bit before settling down and getting their orders. Turns out they were all friends who apparently didn't give a crap about their cars. 
I used to be a server at an upscale cafe restaurant breakfast place. We made our own syrup for pancakes. One day, I am serving this guy in his late 60s or so and I bring him his pancakes. He asks me for the sugar free syrup. Oh, I am sorry, sir. We actually make our own syrup and don't have sugar free. Yeah you do. I hid some sugar free syrup that I brought from home underneath the coffee maker. Huh, it's right over there. Points at coffee maker. Go check. I walk over there and there is a freaking bottle of Aunt Jemima sugar free syrup under the coffee maker. I asked everyone working if they put that there. Nobody had any clue how or why it was there. I worked at a Wendy's for about 3 years. Mind you, I live in the suburbs so there wasn't too much poverty in the area. I went into the bathroom once to do the usual cleaning and check if there were enough paper towels, etc. There was a guy siphoning soap. Literally he had gotten off the top of the soap dispenser and was putting the hand soap into another container. The goofiest part is that he just saw me and was like hey nonchalantly, as if nothing was happening. I should have stopped him, but I was just surprised and he left really quick after that. The same guy came in another time and was loading up on napkins and straws but my manager made him stop. TL. DR. Some silly man was seriously siphoning some soap. Upvote for alliteration TL. DR. A family of known thieves tried to rip a gumball machine off the wall. As they were walking out the manager caught them and they just put it on the floor and calmly told him we found it like that and didn't realize we couldn't take it and walked out. Didn't realize we couldn't take it. An understandable mistake. I had a guy become irate and start shouting at me yesterday because we don't carry Vegemite. I work at a school bookstore in western Massachusetts. Two guys made off with a canoe from the sporting goods department of a large department store in my city but got caught when they went back for the paddles. So they were caught without a paddle. I bet the newspaper headline writers had a field day with that one. Okay at the time I was working at Blockbuster and an older guy came in, I'd say late 50s or early 60s. He comes to the register and asked if we rent out P. I explained to him no we do not but the store down the street does. I heard this question a lot. So anyway guy says he'll just make do and comes back with a stack of Olsen twins videos from when they were like 8. Couldn't tell if I got trolled or if he was for real. Either way I could never look that guy in the eye again. I also worked at a family video store back in the day. After being told that, dejected customers would quite often come back with showgirls and striptease. I was the night manager of a grocery store and I've seen some weird crap. A guy stole a fifth of a vodka and drank the whole thing in the bathroom in about 5 minutes. Then tried to pay me in handfuls of pennies as I called the police. A guy bought about 50 packs of cold budding turkey lunch meat on Thanksgiving. Saddest Thanksgiving ever. An Indian man tried to get the store to start carrying the mint he was growing in his house. A guy with a gun and a taser on his hip. This is Chicago so you never see crap like that. Who calmly told me he was a bounty hunter. A guy came shopping with his wife and three kids. He was a middle aged man who looked completely normal. From the waist up. From the waist down. He was wearing a skirt. Pantyhose and high heels. His family didn't seem weirded out or embarrassed at all. There was the guy jerking off in the sink and making direct eye contact with any other customers who came in the bathroom. TL. DR. Freaking people. Man. I worked for about a year in customer service in a large department store. We had quite a few regulars who came in to pay their credit card bill or take out a lay-by, etc. We had one customer and looking back now whenever he came in he'd never do any of these things or ask for assistance. He'd just come in for a long chat. He was an elderly chat and you'd never miss him when he came in as he was always dressed head to toe in orange. Now it wasn't enough that he was constantly dressed in all orange. He also changed his name to suit his favorite color. And so he was Mr. Orange. Mr. Happy Orange. He had legally changed his name to Happy Orange. I know this for a fact as my colleagues told me he had come in with legal documentation to change his name on his credit card account. This was a couple of years before I started working there. And so, Mr. Orange would come in every couple of weeks for a yarn. I tried to hold a couple of conversations with him but he was very difficult to follow and somehow all conversations led back to orange and how it is the happiest color. His name used to be George. 
When I used to work in retail I once had an old guy bring in his DVD player that he was having issues with. I connected it to a TV to test it and quickly discovered he had left a Girls Gone Wild DVD in it. He was standing right next to me when I found it, just smiling. He said I like the softcore stuff, you know, nothing too bad. I lol'd and didn't charge him for the service. Not me, but my mother once worked for a small restaurant in Thailand. One night these two people on a date walked in for dinner and throughout the night this guy treated his date like crap. It was clear to everyone else in the restaurant that the girl was getting annoyed with this guy since he treated the waitresses like crap. Constantly interrupted her and dismissed everything she said. At the end of the night he made up some lame excuse about not having much money to pay the full bill. He then said that it didn't matter though because he'd foot the bill on their next date. So this girl stands up and tells her date that she needed to go to the bathroom first. Instead, she walks to the kitchen and asks very politely for one egg. The cooks oblige. She walks back to the table and in one swift motion, picks up her purse and smashes this egg over the guy's head at the same time. She then walks straight out and the staff at the restaurant make him pay for the bill, with the price of the egg of course. Talk about having egg on your face. I used to work at Dairy Queen. This really, really skinny guy, I'm 6 foot 7, 140 pounds, and he was skinnier than me, purchased two pre-made blizzard cheat cakes, sat down and ate them both in less than an hour. I had an old lady come in on Black Friday one year when I worked at Gamestop. I walked over to her asking if she needed any help with anything and she says they put a radio in my wall. Do you hear strange voices at night? I stared at her for about 5 seconds before very hesitantly telling her no. She accepted my answer and immediately left, only to return about 30 seconds later. I asked if she needed any help with anything to which she responded I think there's about to be a fight in the parking lot at Bojangles in Clemson. The Gomez stop that I worked at was not in Clemson. It was about 30 to 45 minutes away from Clemson. Me. There's not really anything I can do about that. Her. I think they are poisoning their customers. Their food tastes different than all the other Bojangles. Have you ever ate there? Me. I've never ate at the Bojangles at Clemson. I don't go to Clemson often. Her. You know Clemson? They have that football team. Me. Yes mom they do. Her. Okay and leaves. I worked at a drug store with a 1 hour photo booth. One day this guy comes in and darts all over the store humming the Mission Impossible song. Other customers are obviously freaked out and clear the way for him as he starts ducking and rolling around the aisles. He eventually makes it to the photo counter and waits. I walk up and ask if I can help him. He hands me a roll of film and asks are you a fed? I shook my head no. He says I need these printed. Don't give them to anyone other than me. And don't look at them he ran full speed out of the store screaming I'll be back. They're on the roof now. I end up developing the film to see photos of 7 or 8 guns in his house. He also took photos of letters from the local police department. Advising him he is not being followed and he can rest assured he is safe. Later he shows back up and again repeats his previous entrance to the store. He gets to the photo counter and my friend walks up to help him. He asks are you a fed my friend says number the crazy guy drops a 20 on the counter and opens his hand for the photos. My friend hands them over. Crazy guy dashes out of the store without his change. We never saw him again. TL. DR. Crazy guy runs through drug store. Humming mission impossible. Gets photos developed of his guns and letters from police. That's sad. Sounds like a schizophrenic not taking his meds. Not me but a friend worked at a sporting goods store. One day an older lady, looked around 65-70, came in and asked if they had night vision cameras for sale. My friend says no mom but we do have these that set off a bright flash when movement is detected and then takes multiple pictures. They're $90. She ends up buying like 5 or 6 of them and afterwards my friend asks her if she is getting wild animals on her property. She says, number. Proceeds to look around. Comes in to whisper I'm looking for some dang zombies. Customer high on drugs tried to steal a DVD player. We, the staff, confronted him as a group. He started to headbutt his way through a tempered glass window. That is when you video it and put up on YouTube. Probably make a profit on the views over the cost of the DVD player. 
A girl knocked herself out of her car in the drive through because a spider was in her car. She got scared, jumped out, and the door shut and locked. She was stuck there for 45 minutes waiting for someone to come and unlock her door. The spider was still inside the car on the window mocking her. Jeez, the least the spider could do is unlock the door. Technically not customers, but patrons of a sort. When I worked as a beach lifeguard a couple put their 3 year old kid in an inflatable boat in the water, and just left him there, oh yeah, offshore winds, so. I stole a bra stool from my favorite bar back in the day, I had been a daily customer there for a couple years when the bar was sold, I showed up for the first day under new ownership and found it ruined, karaoke machine, Jager dispenser, staff all wearing stupid matching polo shirts, so I took my stool and walked out, never went back, still have the stool, man goes into bar, leaves with stool sample, film at 11. I had a group of Harvard students make a dish tower between two tables with their saucers and plates. The points for engineering, deductions for being complete to shats. Well, you are talking about Harvard after all. Used to work at Radio Shack, and we sold a wind up radio to this homeless man. He returned about 10 days later, and as soon as he walked in, declared very loudly. This radio is a piece of crap and threw it on the floor, and walked out, never to return. I work at a comic book store and lots of weird creepy things happen. But there is this one old man who is the most creepster of all. On multiple occasions he has come in and complimented me about my clothes or even once about my legs. He is always buying the comics with scantily clad women on them. Every time when he leaves he tells me. Have a nice day, even if you don't want to. One day, he asks to use our restroom. Since he was old, I said yes. He proceeds to spend over an hour in the bathroom. When he finally finishes and leaves the store, he says, Sometimes you can't wait to get home to rub one out. I am still scarred. I used to work at Walmart, and on three separate occasions some guy had crap on the floor. One was in the sporting goods department. Another was in the women's underwear department, and the third was right in the main aisle. After the third time, he was banned from the store. Later the same day, police found him jerking off in the parking lot and arrested him. After the third time, he was banned from the store. My question is why he wasn't banned the first or second time he took a crap in a store. I once saw a customer walk into a department store and immediately start flipping over tables of expensive china and dishware. As other shoppers ran and hid, the customer began picking up ceramic dinner plates and throwing them at other shoppers' families. Women. Children like frisbees. He was 6 feet 4 inches and weighed 270 pounds. He was wearing camouflage shorts, work boots, and a do-rag. No shirt. From there, he punched, knocked over, and destroyed two expensive display mannequins, then, in a sweeping motion, used his arm to send a bunch of cologne bottle samples flying off of the fragrance countertop, he knocked over some clothing displays, and then began chasing the assistant store manager around a circular display table, by this time, a crowd of 100 plus people had formed, but nobody did anything, I worked for the store in loss prevention. A few minutes before this all happened, my partner and I had spotted a shoplifter who ran when we tried to stop him. My partner combed them all while I went back to the store to locate the shoplifter's family. When I got to the store, I heard them paging the emergency code. I radioed for my partner, but there was no answer. My partner had found the shoplifter and was staying close to him so as to keep him in sight. He turned the volume down on his radio so as not to alert the shoplifter. He knew I would find the family who would eventually meet back up with the shoplifter, and we'd make the stop then. As I got into the store I saw the crowd of people around the top of the escalators looking down into the lower level. I heard the screaming the glass breaking. I ran. When I saw the guy, I didn't want to be the one to approach him, but nobody else did and I knew it was my job. Sir, calm down. He punched me in the face before I knew what happened. Dug the frame of my glasses into my cheek. He wound back for a second punch. I caught the second one. From there, I bear hugged him and pushed with all my strength. He fell backward, off balance, and down to the ground. Once on the ground, then people came to help. It took 5-6 people to hold him down. 
even after I got him in handcuffs, still four people to hold him down. The police said he woke up in the jail cell handcuffed to the wall four hours later and said this can't be good. Turns out, his sister had just died and he had gone to the mall with the sister's daughter, his niece. He couldn't handle it. He called his wife and told her the daughter was in the arcade and he was going to get high. He went to the car and smoked PCP, then decided to shop for China, I guess. Comma the customer began picking up ceramic dinner plates and throwing them at other shoppers. PCP. Comma the police said he woke up in the jail cell handcuffed to the wall 4 hours later and said this can't be good. Oh yeah, that's definitely PCP. Comma he went to the car and smoked PCP. Called IT. I worked fast food. An average looking middle aged man walks in and goes directly into the bathroom. Walks out 5 minutes later and leaves. My manager walks in later to find a poop filled pair of boxes in the sink. There are garbage cans right there. My father and I own a pizza shop. The strangest one had to be a little old lady who came in asking for 5 pieces of pizza and demanded a refund because she couldn't eat it all. Even though I was pretty sure she did eat it all. She kept saying she didn't. We later found out she shoved them under her dress. They fell out when she got up. She later on started called me a freaking Hawaiian and told me to go back to Japan. I worked at a photo lab in a drugstore during my early 20s. One day an old woman with a shopping cart walked behind the counter and into the lab between the machines. I turned towards her, and she has this confused expression on her face where, where am I I answer, mom, you're in the photo lab, you can exit over there, pointing towards where she came from. Old people are like little kids sometimes. And then she probably got in her car and drove home. That's what scares me. I worked at a Colston Creamery for several years. A woman came in by herself one afternoon and ordered three half gallons of ice cream. That's actually pretty common. People take it to parties and stuff. She seemed really scattered and in a hurry, but it took forever to get her ice cream made and take her money since she was so disorganized. I finished ringing her up and thanked her, and she continued to shuffle around in her handbag. I normally stay by the register when a customer is in the lobby, but the batch in the ice cream machine needed to come out, so I went into the back. A few seconds later I hear her grab her bag of ice cream and leave the store. I'm alone now, and stay in the back prepping ice cream. My co-worker came in about 10 minutes later and asks why is there a bag of ice cream on the counter I take a look. The woman had watched me set the bag of ice cream on the high counter to her right, basically at eye level. But as she left in a hurry, she picked up a bag full of receipts, not even credit card receipts, just itemized, to the left of the register instead. She was long gone, nothing we could do about it. But we were baffled at how she didn't notice the weight difference between the two bags. I actually thought maybe this was some sort of scam. Until she called back that afternoon. She'd finally figured out that she had the wrong bag. And was in a panic because her party was about to start. I apologized. Freaking customer service. And let her know I had set her ice cream aside if she wanted to come back for it. Her exact words. I'm in town an hour away. And I won't have time. So it will be easier if you just bring it to me. She then seemed really indignant that we didn't offer free delivery on forgotten items. Even if I was in superhero mode. I didn't even have a car at work that day. Late at night. I sometimes ponder all the mysteries of that woman. Maybe I've just thought about it too much. But when you lay it all out. It almost seems like she was trying to lure me into something sinister. And really unorganized. I mean. Did she actually expect that a notoriously goopy ice cream was going to make it an hour away from the store in July in the first place? I really don't think there was much she could accomplish with the receipts themselves. The Colston years want me. Weirdos love ice cream. My wife and I used to work at a popular pancake place that keeps flavored syrups on the table. My wife watched a kid climb up on the table, whip it out, and urinate all over the syrups. The worst part was the parents reaction. They were just like oh Billy, you little scamp, and then didn't bother to tell anyone. Sounds like a house that is international. A woman threw her sub sandwich on the ground because we didn't call her name out correctly. I work at Firehouse Subs. My dad used to love giving bizarre names when we went out to really nice restaurants. Mind you, we have a hard enough last name as it is. 
so usually we give a first name or something fake anyway. One was announcing loudly and proudly that he was the Thaddeus T. Thudpucker, better dine with his loving clan of Thudpuckers. He also liked giving L. Lloyd Llewellyn at Asian places. I used to work at a grocery store as a night stocker. There was a really beat looking alcoholic guy who would come in every night and buy a bottle of mouthwash. One night he came into the store and had a violent seizure. We called an ambulance and they took him off to the emergency room. Two hours later, he was back in there buying mouthwash. The cashier was like, that was strange, huh and the guy was like, yeah, I've never had a seizure in a grocery store before. The next day, someone caught him pounding mouthwash in the bathroom and he was banned from the store. When my brother worked at Walmart, this guy walked out with a TV thinking the guy already bought it. Employees actually helped him load the stolen TV into his car. After he left they found the anti-theft device back near electronics. How he walked out without paying or being caught is beyond me. I don't know how much of this is true due to the fact that my brother can be a liar but thought he'd post anyway. When I worked at Walmart I once found a whole turkey dressed in baby clothes complete with a hat sitting on a bench in the store. I waited tables in my early 20s. I was inputting an order into the flat touchscreen type machine we used. When a customer from another table came up and threw his plate of spaghetti and meat sauce down next to the screen, getting it all over the screen, and stated, I am not going to eat this crap. I turned to him and told him that I'd be happy to get my manager. My manager came over, saw what had happened and kicked the guy and his girlfriend out of the restaurant. He was yelling at them, that they were horrible people and that our restaurant did not need to serve people like them, and to get out and never come back. It was epic. Other customers started clapping. My manager calmed a free drink for everyone in the restaurant, and the rest of the evening went swimmingly. I worked at a pet store. My boss busted a guy trying to steal tropical fish. He had brought a little net and had a bag of water in the pocket of his coat, and was chasing the fish around the tank when my boss walked up behind him and just stood there to watch. Somebody else stole a python. We also had customers several times go into the tropical fish room, which is unlit except for all the fish tanks and smoke pot. We also had some ladies from the whorehouse next door come in and try on dog collars and leashes. I used to DJ at a small bar where a couple of drunk people decided they liked the look of our outdoor furniture and attempted to steal two metal chairs, walked over to a nearby taxi rank and attempted to convince the taxi driver, who had been watching the whole thing that the bar had sold them the chairs for five pounds. The bar manager arrived at that point to reclaim the chairs. Some people. Goddamn. The weirdest crap happens when I DJ. Last time I was given a whole sheet of brownies. Some lady just walked up and set them behind the booth. Mid set. I'm freaking allergic to chocolate. I used to work as a hostess and a drunk older couple. About 50-60 came in towards the end of the night and asked to be seated somewhere real private and I told them that the sections in the back no longer had a waiter assigned to it. The old guy creepily leaned in and winked I bet you I could get someone to serve me. What does that even mean? Midway to walking them to their table I noticed they weren't right behind me so I turned around and they were still at the hostess stand grossly making out and pawing at each other. I decided to let the manager cover this one and got news of their increasingly inappropriate displays of affection from the waiter the rest of the night. I work at a gourmet pizza restaurant. We have a 26 inches pizza called the monster. If you and a friend can eat is under an hour you get it for free. Otherwise it's $45-$50. So these two dick bags I went to high school with come in and order a 5 star. 5 cheese and rosemary. Monster for the monster challenge. But 45 minutes go by and probably 3 stroke for the pizza is gone. Time starts ticking and a manager and myself come watch. They were the only people in the restaurant at the time. They both look sick and sweaty, having ate about 3 pounds of cheese and dough each so far. They get down to the last minute or two and are shoving pizza in their mouths. Obviously nauseous. One proceeds to projectile vomit all over himself, the table remaining pizza, and his teammate. They both get up and run out leaving vomit in their cell phones on the table. Since I knew them, we could identify them to the police for dining and dashing on a $65 ticket. They also, stupidly, had beers. I didn't have to clean anything up since I handle food, so the managers got to clean up the puke, 
and since I knew the Doucher bags I didn't have to pay for their ticket. It was totally gross though. They also never came back for their cell phones. I worked in a video store all through high school. By far the weirdest thing I saw was two mentally retarded customers start fighting. They were both frequent customers, one always with his guardian, the other by himself, but I'd never seen them in the store at the same time before. Apparently they hated each other, because when they saw each other they just started yelling frick you, which is just as horribly hilarious as you can imagine. They started hitting each with the videos they each had, and our videos were in hard plastic cases, when the guardian ran up and broke up the fight. I work at McDonald's. I had a customer throw his burger at my face at 1 o'clock this morning because his pickle was not in the center of the freaking bun. What's the meanest thing a customer has ever done to you and how did you react? I was working drive through one day when a woman ordered a large orange high C. She gets to the window and I see there are 3 other people laughing pretty hard. I take her money and give her the drink. About 2 seconds later I hear fire in the hole and see a large orange grenade flying at me. Somehow I ninja the pop back into her Audi. She even had the nerve to ask my manager for her money back. I went through a McDonald's drive though once and the place was slammed inside and out. After ordering I was asked to park next to the curb and someone would bring my order to me as soon as possible. A girl walks up to my car visibly shaken and as she approaches my car to hand me my food she says please don't slap me. I said what she said the last lady she delivered the food yelled at and slapped her across the face because the food took so long. Jesus. Fast food service PTSD is not okay. I worked at a local sports bar and had two men and their dates come in, along with their children. These women had three children with them age approximately 2-5. The 5 year old was running around the restaurant picking food off of people's plates. The middle child was changing the TV stations in the middle of baseball playoffs. The youngest child was sleeping on the table while these couples proceeded to drink margaritas. I served them their food and immediately as the youngest. Sleeping child took a bite he proceeded to vomit, completely covering the table. I attempted to be a hospitable server and cleaned it up expecting that the customers would be appreciative. Nope. Ordered more margaritas. At that point I refused to serve them anymore. They each had two margaritas, because they were extremely disrespectful and I was not comfortable serving alcohol to people who are responsible for getting children home safely. But that's where crap hit the fan. These women proceeded to stand up and scream at me from across the table saying, You don't know me, motherfucker, you want some? To which I had my manager come over and kick them out. The kicker? Before they left, they poured out two full ketchup bottles underneath the table and left no tip. Somebody's little brat came by me and took food off my plate. I'd lose my crap. I know a guy who got fired from his job managing a Burger King after he called a customer a C for throwing their drink in his face. It was dart and they wanted regular. This customer customer can do whatever they want mentality needs to end. I would rather shop at a place where they respect their employees anyway. A rather large woman told me I was stupid and would never be worth anything because I didn't make her large ice cream cone big enough, even though I followed our store's guidelines. I reacted by giving her a huge ice cream cone, because you know, the customer is always right. I assume if she does that everywhere, she'll die of obesity soon enough. I assume if she does that everywhere, she'll die of obesity soon enough. That's horrible. I still laughed. Have an upvote. I work in a water park. We have a minimum height requirement for many of our slides, and most of the time the parents might get a little annoyed and the child might be upset, but they accept it and move on. Not for one time. The dad comes up with his son wanting to ride our biggest slide, and his son was short by about 2 inches. He went into a rage when I told him that his son wasn't tall enough, and went on about all the money he spent to get in there, etc. At this point I blew the signal for supervisor on my whistle. The dad continues his tirade, and starts insulting me, swearing at me, saying that I'm going nowhere in my life and that I'll be working there my entire life. I was a 17 year old girl, and the job was to save up for university. It was all I could do not to cry. He kept puffing his chest out like a teenager and moving forwards, so eventually my back was to the slide with only a couple inches of ground left, 
Just as my supervisor rounded the last flight of stairs the man decided it would be good to give me a shove. I lose my balance and fall backwards head first into the slide. I hit the slide with my head so hard that I blacked out and only woke up about 10 seconds later when I hit the water at the bottom. I was obviously very disoriented and the guard at the bottom jumped in for me and grabbed me. The staff were concerned about my neck so I got the fun experience of being put onto the spinal board and having an ambulance come to pick me up. I had a concussion but nothing worse than that. Thank god. The man was arrested for assault and tried to counter sue the water park. He lost. I didn't get any money but did get a nice promotion. I still work there but not running the slides anymore. Now I'm just a lifeguard. TL. DR. A man got mad at me and shoved me down a slide, giving me a concussion and making me black out. I had a woman throw a foot long subway sub at my head because I wouldn't give it to her free. The story. This woman sent her 7 year old into the store to get the sandwich with a note listing the ingredients she wanted on it. At the cash. I rang in the sandwich. And the little girl passed me one filled out sub club card. Used to be good for a 6 inches sandwich with purchase of a 28 ounce drink. And just stood there. I cleared the cash and rang it in a game discounting half the sub and charging on a drink. I told the girl how much and she just stood there looking at me. I asked what was wrong and she said that her mom never gave her any money. I asked if her mom was outside and if she could go get her. The girl left and came back in crying and getting towed behind a raging mammoth of a woman who was demanding to talk to my manager about how she was being disrespected. I explained to her the usage of the card and pointed out where the details were printed on tech card. She screamed reached over the counter, grabbed the sandwich and then threw it at my head. My manager later saw the security footage and called me laughing his butt off about it. Poor girl growing up with a mom like that. I had a customer come into my workplace about 6 years ago who was upset because her breadsticks were cold. After putting up with about 5 minutes of vicious abuse, she called me every terrible name under the sun. I finally told her that she couldn't talk to me that way. She responded with this absolute gem. I can talk to you however I want. You're just a pizza girl. Well, snap. I lose it. I was paying my way through university and was holding down two jobs as well as my schooling. I was tired and stressed. I didn't know until this point that seeing red was an actual thing. I literally saw red. I think it was probably my blood pressure. I proceeded to tell her that she was a small, spiteful, stupid woman, who would never amount to anything and she didn't deserve to if she thought the best way to make herself feel good was abusing 19 year old girls. Also lectured, screamed at, her that work is work, and the act of trying to support myself was honorable in itself. She ran away and sent her husband in. He threw the bread at me and a napkin holder off one of the tables and started yelling. The security guard saw and grabbed him while the manager called the police. He got arrested, released later because I decided not to press charges. Not worth the stress. I've never been so angry in my entire life. TL. DR. A woman called me terrible names over breadsticks. I spewed wrath like the fires of Mordor at her. She sent in her husband and I had him arrested for assault after he threw things at me. Upvote simply for that simile of murder. I used to work at Applebee's. One of my tables was an elderly couple and what I assumed was their granddaughter. They ordered their food, steak, salad, and chicken fingers. In the kitchen, a random server, let's call him Matt, was running people's food because everyone was busy. Well, the table next to mine belonged to a server named Ashley. Matt accidentally ran Ashley's food to my table. He asked the old couple if they were the table that had ordered a chicken penne pasta, onion rings, and a chocolate dessert, all of which were completely different than what they had ordered. They said yes. Then then proceeded to yell at the manager about how wrong their food was and how bad of a server I was. I hate people. Oh my god I used to hate that crap. I don't know about Applebee's but we used to have to name each item as we put it down and then ask if everything was okay. The worst was when people started eating the food or dang near finished it before saying something. It's like really man, what the frick. This didn't happen to me but I'll tell it anyways. 
My girlfriend used to work at a Dunkin Donuts in Miami and as you can imagine had to deal with many buttholes. The guy that takes the cake on this one though is the one who asked for his coffee sweet and was unsatisfied. When he got his coffee, it wasn't sweet enough so instead of putting more sugar like a normal human being would, he opened it up and threw the boiling hot coffee at my girlfriend's shirt. The guy then left and drove off. Her burns weren't too bad but all she got out of it was the day off. I don't understand why people don't call the police when this crap happens. I was working at a gas station a few years back a.m. graveyard shift. It was around 1 a.m. when a really heavy guy walks into the store with a brown bag on his head. He comes up to the counter and shells me the brick he has in his hand. He says that if I don't give him the money in the register he will beat me to death with the brick. Now I am a pretty big dude so I start to smile at him. This sets him off and he chucks the brick at me, but it flies right past me to the side. He then runs out of the store. I call the cops and the manager. I end up getting fired from not just giving him the money. What was their reasoning for firing you? Worked at a subway. Customer robbed me at gunpoint. Co-worker in the back saw this and called the cops. Ran out the back door and around the building. When the dude left, my co-worker snapped a pic of the license plate. Sucker didn't think of that. Police come yada yada. Next day the sucker comes in and orders a sandwich like nothing happened. Then he sat down to eat it. I called the cops again and they caught him in our store. Delivered an exchange pizza. First pizza was wrong toppings. I gave them the correct pizza and asked for the incorrect pizza back. The whole family came out to the front yard and started yelling at me about how they deserve to keep the first incorrect pizza as compensation then they brought out two pit bulls and threatened to send the dogs after me i told them to go frick themselves got in my car and called the cops just last week at the restaurant where i work i was serving a table of three people two girls and one guy i had already taken out the food to the girls and was bringing out the curry dish that the guy had ordered when i slipped my shoes are flats that have next to no grip one slid on the floor i stumbled and his food was on the floor of course i apologized right away and said the chef would make him another immediately the dish he'd ordered was also one of the easiest things on the menu to prepare and i knew the chef would have another one ready in about two minutes the guy said that was fine and that he understood that accidents happen. I was thanking my good luck that I'd gotten a friendly customer. And then one of the girls said that if we were a making his, we'd have to remake all of theirs because they weren't going to sit around for half an hour and let their food get cold while they waited for us to make another dish for the guy. I started explaining that the new dish would only take 2 minutes. And the guy started saying that they could go ahead and start eating without him when the two girls flung their ceramic plates loaded with hot noodles and sauce at me. One missed and shattered the glass cover on the table next to them. The other struck me in the forehead. I have a bruise from the plate now. Mild burns on my face and chest from the hot food. And my nicest and most expensive white work shirt is potentially ruined from being hit with a full serving of noodles. I sent it to the dry cleaners. We'll see if they can save it. The guy got furious with them and shouted a lot about how stupid they were. He was also nice enough to shout for my boss right away. Call an ambulance. Help me up. And make sure I wasn't seriously injured. He even offered to pay for all the damage that the two girls had done. My boss refused that offer after listening to what happened. Insisting that the guy had done nothing wrong. And that the girl were the ones who would have to pay, not him. Those girls got banned from the restaurant and had to pay a fair bit for all the damage they did. They're also paying my salary during this week off for recovery. The guy got his replacement meal free, and my boss told him to come back anytime, without the girls, and we'd give him a nice discount on future meals. Where I used to work a grandmother came in with her granddaughter to purchase a bathing suit. They came up to purchase a green strippy swimsuit the young girl had on. The price was $18.99. The grandmother swore it was on sale. So I had an employee check the price on the other suits just in case that suit had gotten missed in the markdown. It was not on sale. When I told the lady this, she flipped her lid. She paid for it anyways cause her granddaughter was already wearing it and I wasn't about to be nice and tell her it didn't matter if the granddaughter was wearing it and she could go take it off. As she was leaving she stopped, turned and looked at me and said I do not wish you well in life. 
I was completely and utter baffled that someone would go so far to say something so cruel over a $19 bathing suit for a grandchild. I worked in retail a bit my senior year of high school and some time after, I once had a customer that I was ringing up rudely asked me if I had gone to high school and said I was probably a dropout, towards the end of a transaction, to which I just gave an exaggerated shrug, gave a dumb smile, and crossed my eyes as I handed her her bag. I've recently become a manager at McDonald's. Unfortunately, managers are required to deal with all of the angry customers. There's a guy who comes in frequently, read, two or three times a day, and gets an iced coffee made in a very specific way. Apparently, one morning we messed it up. He comes in, 32 ounce coffee in hand, and asks for a manager. I step up to the counter and say I'm a manager. How can I help you? He takes the lid off of his coffee and throws it at me. I'm soaked in pee and ask him to leave. He refused to leave until I remade his coffee. A few of the regulars, local truckers who come in every day for coffee and conversation, got up and stood on either side of him and one of them said that kid asked you to leave. I think that's probably a good idea. He left. Long story short, take care of your good customers and they'll take care of you. When I worked in Disney World I measured a child to make sure she was tall enough to go on Splash Mountain. She was tall enough. Her father turned to me and called me a bee. This was my first Christmas away from home. When I was a lifeguard, we had a height requirement for a slide. When parents got pee I wouldn't let their kid ride anyway I said this. Hey I'm cool with letting your kid ride down. But follow me to the office where you can sign a waiver saying you're cool with your daughter dying. Her riding the slide is obviously more important than her safety. I had to search for a wheel lock key in a customer's car once. I am a mechanic. She was a hoarder. It was hatred at first sight. What did she hoard? Why her car was full of her used tampons and menstrual pads. I couldn't find it and she said I was a terrible mechanic for not being able to rotate her tires. The smell took a good hour to wash off and I got a long break for that. Working in the clothing portion of my campus store in college, an alumna came I with her band of 7 children, all hers, and asked me to find clothes for all of them, and of course everyone wanted something different and specific. So I start helping, and all 7 of the kids start running around, pulling clothing off hangers and racks, and really causing a lot of totally unnecessary chaos and destruction. I ask the mom to keep her kids close and to ask them to put stuff back or at least stop touching stuff. And boy oh boy, this woman lost her freaking crap towards me. She started swearing at me and stormed out of my section with a huge amount of clothes threatening to tell my manager about my attitude and don't you know who I am? I could buy and sell you, don't make me take my business elsewhere. And shocked, I started to clean up my section. An hour later, I was finishing up and found a piece of notebook paper folded in half with my name on the outside. She had gotten one of her kids to write, Lick my plum, is a freaking bee, die and frick you, in crayon and leave it for me to find. And that's the meanest thing a customer has ever done to me. I used a cashier at a department store. It seemed that whenever a customer was in a bitchy mood, S he felt entitled to dump on the poor girl at the checkout. So, our store decided to add some reserved parking spaces for pregnant women. Shortly thereafter, a crabby male customer was checking out at my register and snarled. First you have handicapped parking and now you add parking for pregnant women. What's next? I responded. Parking for buttholes. You can be the first one. I was so happy to leave that job. Working at Chick-fil-A at 16, I was a cashier working the counter during breakfast. The manager hadn't come back with the change from the bank so I didn't have a lot of change left in my drawer. I had a line of a few people in front of me and so did the other girl next to me. I started running out of change and let the guy know that unfortunately I wouldn't be able to take his order at my register because I didn't have change to give him and the girl next to me would have to take him. He got uber pee and started screaming and yelling at me telling me how horrible and stupid I was and how I freaking ruined his morning. Totally created a scene in front of everyone. On top of this I was super emotional and burst into tears. The owner came out and asked the guy to leave and told him he wasn't welcome at that chick fil a any longer. 
I moved over to the end of the counter and started portioning out cheesecake while trying to compose myself and a few ladies came up to me to tell me I was doing a great job and to ignore that man. Kind of restored my faith in humanity. TL. DR. Dude freaked out trying to buy breakfast at Chick-fil-A and made me cry. Owner expelled him from the property and told him he was banned. My first ever job. A lady came in and asked where the toilet was. As we were a small knick-knack store, we didn't have one for the public to use. So she took a vase off the shelf, peed in it, and put it back, in all its steaming, yellow glory. Guess who had the privilege of cleaning that up? Not me personally, but I was in a McDonald's during the lunch rush. This old guy in front of me started harassing the girl at the register, who was obviously fairly new. He asked her where she was from and then asked if everyone from that town was as dumb as she was. He turned to me after saying this and was just like am I right I flat out told him right there that she was doing her best at the busiest part of her shift and that him being a dong to her wasn't going to make things any better or easier. When I got up to the counter I told her I was sorry she had to deal with pricks like that at work. I hate it when a freaking idiot tries to involve you in being cruel to another person. It's like they need to confirm for themselves that they aren't crappy people by getting somebody else in on it. I was a store manager for the mess stop. Return policy is pretty basic. No cash or credit back on a new game. Save your no game is sealed at Gamestop haha. A 14 year old kid approaches counter with crappy movie based game they had bought from another location the previous day. Mom is speaking for him. We bought this and he didn't like it, so I want my money back. Okay, mom. I'm sorry but our return policy on new games is no refunds once the seal has been broken. That's stupid. How do you know if it's a good game? Then, well. That's one of the reasons we're more lenient on our used product. If you purchase a used copy and don't like it, we'll gladly give you your money back. Well I want my money back now. While mom and I are arguing, the kid has been browsing. Picked up a copy of Battlefield Bad Company. 2 and is tugging her arm telling her he'll just switch it out for something else. Now, this is still not within policy. But the kid didn't do anything wrong. And I approve of his decision this time. And mom is pee me off. Mom, I'd be more than happy to say, switch it for another game. Well we don't want anything in your store, we want our money. Number, no mom, I want this game. Mom, I'm offering you more than I have to, I'd be more than happy to switch it for that game he has. We don't want anything here. Mom, I want this game. Fine, fine, give it to that fat butt and let's get out of this crap hole. Mom, what did you say? Cool and smirking, nothing. Here, he wants this. Get out of my store, now. So here is a story where I thought I was dealing with the worst customer I had ever encountered. But it turned out to be an awesome experience. I was working in home theater at a national retailer that no longer exists. I'm sure you can figure it out. I spent hours with this guy who bought TVs, sound systems, installations, and accessories for 2.5 full systems, 3 rooms. There was a lot of negotiating and with the help of managers we were able to settle on a price for all of this. Honestly, even though service at the time, and probably still is, extremely expensive, I think this was a fair deal for everyone. Not unexpected, the jerk installers who won, were not very good too. Had terrible attitudes and three, were third party so didn't have to deal with this national retailer directly happened to royally screw up this entire install. I felt really bad for the guy because even though he got a good deal for all of this, he spent no less than 6k on all of this gear. I had no idea the install went wrong until he walked into my location while I was working. Typical for retail. I asked him how's the new setup which is when he started screaming in my face. This was several years ago so my memory is a bit fuzzy, but I recall him explaining, between his expletives, that after the installers messed up his wall, they just darted for the door and drove away. Now, he was demanding that I fix this or he would return his sale. I was riding on this sale to hit my goals for the month so I could ride easy the rest of the month. We were on little to no commission, but not hitting sales goals generally meant termination. I decide to go to this guy's house and I was terrified. I show up, he has a case of beer and some pizza waiting for me. I declined the beer but did enjoy myself a slice. 
After hanging out, drinking soda and eating pizza for a bit, we tag team this installation, and it looked gorgeous after we finished. Everything worked well and we had a really good time doing it. Afterward, he invited me to stay and watch the game on the new TV and even invited me to a couple of events that he was throwing. Dude was pretty loaded. I declined coming to the events, but it was really an awesome experience. TL. DR. Installers botched a TV sound system install. I, the sales guy had to fix it. Customer who was once P, ended up treating me like gold. I used to work in the deli bakery department at a grocery store called Kroger. There was this mute autistic guy trying to order a steamed plate lunch. He wanted a certain piece of chicken and I kept getting it wrong every time I picked up a piece. He got mad after the second attempt to help him. I even grabbed a pen and paper so he can write down what he wanted in the beginning yet he declined. He came behind the counter and hit me in my shoulder. Let me tell you that special people have special strength. His punch sent me back a few steps and right before I swung to hit him back, security tackled him. I used to be a call center monkey for a cell phone company. Customer service. I've had customers threaten to kill me, curse me, my mother, my family, and my non-existent cat. None of those really bothered me. The meanest customer I have ever had the pleasure of speaking to was a lady who was probably in her mid to late 30s. A little backstory. Back in the day we had this promo thing going on, where if your minutes or text usage for the month reached a certain figure, you would get points. You could then redeem those points for a day weekend week of free texts calls. This is in a country that does not have unlimited plans so it was kind of a big deal. Important to note, that when you redeemed your points, the free whatever would kick in at midnight of that same day and could only be used the next day. You had to either go on the website or call us to sign up for it, and it was advertised everywhere. We were obligated to tell you that when you redeemed your points, and we definitely did. Anyway, this lady got free texts for the weekend, which is awesome. She either forgot or neglected to give a single frick about the midnight thing. From 5 o'clock in the afternoon until midnight this lady sent 3000 texts. I am sure some of those were duplicates, just for the heck of it cause it's free, but the number was still 3 freaking thousand texts, and she got charged for them. So she calls us up and is understandably upset, because it was one heck of a bill. She demands that we reverse the charges or give her a refund. I am unable to do this, since the terms of the promotion were clearly stated every freaking where, and not even in small prints. I try to explain this, offer a free texting package for her next billing cycle, whatever I can actually do in order to help. Yeah, no. For the entire duration of the hour conversation she speaks to me in this condescending, uppity tone of voice, spelling out words slowly, you know what I mean, and insisting that I was the stupidest person in the entire world for not getting what she wants. She mocks me for being in customer support, asking me if I couldn't get a real job, etc etc. I don't know why this conversations hit me so hard, I think it was mostly the way she spoke to me rather than the actual thing said. It was like I was a cockroach on the bottom of her shoe not even worthy of her time. It ended up being a 35 minutes conversation, we were only allowed 3 minutes per customer, and my supervisor had to eventually take the call. I was very close to tears while speaking to her. We ended up bringing up her text log and hand counting every text she sent before midnight. She got a refund for those, because that's how my company worked. But lady, if you're out there, screw you. That wasn't very nice of you. Wear dresses barbers. What was your eye fricked up moment and how did the customer react? I turned a girl's head bright sea foam green. She was a teenager. It was supposed to be platinum blonde. I was alone. Tears were shed. She'd be so on trend if that happened today. Not a hairdresser, but a groomer. I was trimming a dog's tail and right as I was closing the scissors he wagged rather enthusiastically at someone coming through the door. I ended up snipping about 1mm off the end of his tail and it required stitches. I felt like the worst person in the world. The clients were actually very nice about it and continued to bring him to me. Somewhat relevant, when I was 8, my dad paid me 20 bucks to allow him to completely shave my head because I have these 3 huge freckles on my scalp that form a triangle, and apparently he thought it was hilarious. I got 20 bucks, my dad got into deep crap with my mom, 
Greatest childhood memory. I mean, technically, any three freckles form a triangle. I'll go. Kind of the opposite but I fricked up as a customer. I had just moved to a new town and needed a haircut. I walked around a little until I saw a run down looking hole in the wall barber shop. Mentally shrugged to myself and headed in. There were two middle aged Italian guys sitting on a bench reading newspapers and a guy in his early 20s leaning against the wall telling a story. They all look at me with a kind of blank expression then one of the older guys kind of barks at the younger guy get Tony. The young guy walks to the back and in a minute or so a guy in his 60s also comes out, glances at me and then nods at a chair and in a super heavy Italian accent says you sit, I cut, okay, so there is an odd vibe here, but I still have that stranger in a strange land feeling you get when you move to a new town and I'm a bit of a moron so I sit, and Tony starts cutting, there was no discussion about what kind of haircut I wanted or anything. This old guy just starts snipping away. Occasionally he pushes my head in the direction he wants it to go but there is no conversation. Which is fine by me I hate small talk with strangers. So during my efficient and silent haircut there is a small parade of Italian guys that enter the shop. Say hi to Tony and then go into the back room which after the fourth guy I can only assume contains a staircase to the basement or perhaps a TARDIS. Even I am not so idiotic that I haven't caught on yet. Obviously this place holds a totally legitimate business with nothing shady going on at all. Right. Eventually Tony finishes his chopping and I'll be damned if it isn't the best haircut I have ever had. So good in fact that I kept going back there for 2 years despite how sketchy the place was. Every single time I went was eerily the same. There were always a couple guys sitting there reading papers. Tony always had to be called from the back for my silent haircut. Well, to be fair once I had been in a few times he actually smiled and welcomed me back and asked how his job, and there was always a lot of foot traffic to the back room, and I was always the only customer. This, this is one of the best stories ever. Get Tony, I would have been pretty dang scared right there, huh? When I was in beauty school, my brother-in-law and husband came in to get haircuts. While I was cutting my Bill's hair, he didn't know what he wanted and kept wanting to go shorter, shorter, shorter. I started out with a 5 guard and ended up down at a 2 by the time he was happy. So, I'm finally about 3 minutes away from being done with the haircut, and I flick the guard off so I can clean up around his ears and hairline. He says hey, absolutely fantastic. I think it's longer on this side, can you even it out? So, I immediately move to that area and slide my clippers up the side of his head, with no guard on. Just take a huge slice of his hair clear off the side of his head. I am not ashamed to say I cried, because I did. I ended up fixing it pretty well and when it grew out a bit, it was his favorite haircut ever. Phew. Or at least he told me so. I have no idea if she made this up to be funny or not. But I asked my salonist the other day if she had ever royally screwed up someone's hair and she said, well, once, and I begged her for the story. Early in her career, this Hispanic guy came in for a haircut. She described him as a quiet guy of few words. Possibly a combination of his personality and a not so fluent relationship with English. She asked if he had any styles in mind and he said very confidently that he would like a basic Caesar cut which he explained to me was a very popular men's hairstyle. Since he seemed to know exactly what he wanted, she only asked the most basic questions like how long do you want it at its longest, and she went off. So she grabs the razor trimmer thing and as soon as it touches his head and she did like a 2 inch patch, he yells what are you doing and she was like, I'm doing a Caesar cut and she grabs a photo from a nearby style book and she said the man just looked at her all horrified and was like number, a scissor, said in a Spanish accent so it sounds like Caesar, cut as he made the two fingered motion for scissors, he had wanted the same thing he had now, only shorter, she said she apologized to him profusely, that day's cut was free and he also got a coupon for his next cut free, she was able to make it look good. He couldn't get what he wanted though, which sucked, but she said he was as alright with it as could possibly be expected. Not my mistake, but a client came in that had her sister cut her hair into three layers. Essentially they made three ponytails and chopped the top the shortest, next a little bit longer, and last the longest. It looked so ridiculous and came out pretty good after I fixed it. Got a good tip on that one because they didn't think it was salvageable. Well. 
I was getting my hair cut once at a salon and the hairdresser snipped off a piece of my ear. It was a very bloody and unpleasant experience. You must have said you wanted the Van Gogh cut. My hairstylist cut me pretty badly on the neck with a straight edge razor. His response was, we got a bleeder, followed by, dang, you just never stop bleeding, as if that was my fault somehow. He then rang me up at the register after I bled out for a good 15 minutes and expected me to pay. I said, you've got to be freaking joking, and walked out, never went back. The guy didn't even apologize. A year or so ago, I had a hairdresser with ridiculously long fake fingernails stab me in the eye with her pinky nail. She acted totally oblivious, even after I said OW and put my hand to my eye and pulled it back looking for blood. She just kept on cutting and pretending like it didn't happen. No, she didn't get a tip. On the receiving end, I used to go to this place called Dino's Barber Shop that everyone in town was convinced was a front for the mob. Everyone who worked there was Italian. Huawei expensive jewelry, drove expensive butt benzes, and they had weekly trips to Atlantic City. Got many of fricked up haircuts while there, but two stand out. One, week before 8th grade is over, go in to get a trim. I ask to keep it longer on top and shorter on the sides, but nothing too complicated. Simple trim, mainly to thin out my hair. But halfway through I realize the woman cutting my hair is giving me a textbook bowl cut and I'm pee. She then tells me don't worry sweetie, I think this would look really good on you. My own son has the same haircut. She had a picture of her son at her station and his haircut was freaking awful. Ended 8th grade with people calling me bowling for soup. They were popular back then. 2. Guy named Jimmy is cutting my hair and the topic of shaving comes up since I just started growing facial hair. Peach fuzz pretty much. Guy offers a free hot shave even though it's not necessary at all. But I won't turn down anything free. Halfway through I realize he's not paying attention to the straight razor shave but instead is watching a college football game and ends up cutting my neck. Not bad enough to get stitches, but bleed a lot. Proceeds to apologizes by saying my bad dude. I've got 10 grand riding on this game. Hair stylist here. I had a teenage client come in for highlights. When consulting for color services, one of the most important things to find out is what previous color is on the hair. There can be weird reactions if certain products were used. She said she used a brand I knew would be fine and not cause any problems. We were going from a warm honey color to as close to platinum that I was willing to go without over processing her hair. After foiling the highlights, I had another client come in, so I had my assistant ready to shampoo while I was applying another color. He came up to me with a worried look on his face and I could tell something was wrong. I walked over to the shampoo bowl, to find that the last 4 inches of her hair were a bright sea foam green. I let the client know there was some kind of chemical reaction with the lightener and asked if there were any other products or colors she had previously used. Instead of being mad, she said oh. I guess I forgot I had henna hair color on my hair about 3 years ago. I thought it just faded out needless to say, I spent the next hour applying soap caps and color balancing. We ended up cutting off about an inch longer than originally planned, but the end result ended up looking beautiful. TL. DR. Always be honest and upfront to your hair stylist about your hair history, or you will end up with turquoise hair. Not a hairdresser but once when I was 17 my dad wanted me to trim his eyebrows. I steadfastly refused but then he started swearing at me and I was all Jesus I'll do it dad unfortunately the electric clippers he gave me were very dull and he wanted me to do em guard less because he only wanted the dangly hairs cut. Well, first pass just brushes the hairs to the side, not cutting them. I push a little deeper but the second pass does the same. Push a little deeper but the third pass does the same. Just pushes the hairs instead of cutting them. Well, mind you I've never used an electric clippers before then. I've seen M used but never use one. Well fourth pass and I push even harder. The teeth catch arrow my freeze. Panic taking hold of my body. My father smells my fear and sees the glimmer of flight in my eyes. He hazards what was that. With a subtle shiver I respond in a high pitched voice as if I leapfrogged backwards in time across the line of puberty I was so happy to have just crossed I can fix IT. He knew something was wrong and took an angry step back what did you do I hazard another yelp I can fix it he rushes to the mirror and I howled at his back. Remember I didn't want to do it, 
You made me. I told you I didn't want to do it. My sister was donating the minimum length of 10 inches to Locks of Love. The hairdresser measured it and put a ponytail at exactly 10 inches from the bottom in order to hold it in place as it was being cut. We probably should have figured she was going to cut above the holder because it wouldn't make sense for her to cut below. But at the time it seemed like such a ridiculous mistake that we rationalized it. From the first cut it was clear that it was too short. But by then it was too late to correct her and would only upset my sister. That absolute pancake cut a good several inches above the ponytail holder. My sister left with a bob and donating a whopping 16 inches to locks of love. Well, I guess it's better than if she made the mistake the other way and 9 inches got thrown in the garbage. Not a hairdresser, sorry, but my mom is. She once told me about how a woman with hair that had been dyed red came in, wanting a different color. I don't remember if my mom had to get the red out first or could apply another color right away, but whatever chemical she used did not play nice with the red dye in the woman's hair. My mom described the hair as melted after that. The woman was actually pretty understanding, but my mom felt horrible about it. The red may have been henna. I read that your hair can actually fry to the point where it starts smoking if you try to use a chemical dye over henna. But I don't know how true that is. I have no intentions of testing it either. I had a hairdresser, while cutting my bangs, snipped off a chunk of eyebrow. I have very pale skin and very dark brows. It was noticeable. Pencil eyeliners are your friends. I've been going to my hairdresser for years and I have extremely big, curly hair and it's a bee to get cut because well, where I'm from if your hair is not within the spectrum of straight to slightly wavy you're going to have a hard time finding a proper hairdresser. Anyway, I love my hairdresser, she is extremely fashion forward, I normally go in and say do whatever you like and come out with something random. At this stage I'd been platinum blonde for a while and went to get a haircut. I figured I may as well get the roots done while I was there. Now, I should mention that I use a different hairdresser to dye my hair. But I was at the salon, I had a wedding that night and I thought what the heck. So my hairdresser proceeded to clump large amounts of bleach onto my hair and within 20 minutes the color was perfect. This to me was amazing. It normally takes 2 applications and about an hour and a half to get an amazing color. Not to mention the pain is unbearable. So the hairdresser started brushing it out and well the hair started to snap off and she started crying quite heavily. To the point where I had to comfort her. She was all I can't believe you're being so good about it and I was just at the point where it's already fricked not much use crying over spilt milk. TL. DR. The hairdresser burned my platinum blonde locks off. She cried. I comforted. My sister has frequently burned my skin when styling, but she ripped out my cartilage piercing once when combing through, then said good thing you are the real customer. Well, it's what I get for not going to a real stylist. I once had a guard pop off while I was cleaning around the sides of my customer's head and I ended up shaving a bald spot about 2x4 inches on the back of his head. Luckily the customer was only a child, and his mother was very understanding. I gave her whole family of 5 free haircuts and they let me play around and do some chemical straightening and dye jobs. After they tipped me $200 and wouldn't let me refuse it, even after telling them all the work I did would have only cost them around $170. Heck I'd pay you $200 to give my kids frosted tips. I don't have kids. An aesthetician burned my eyelid with hot wax assured me it was okay, and then pulled off a good chunk of eyelid skin when she pulled off the strip. Second degree burns. Yippee. I have a mole below one eyebrow. Once the waxer said, oops, looks like the wax took off your blackhead. Ugh, no. That was a mole and it bled for 15 minutes. When I was 13 I asked for straight across bangs. It was my first haircut without my parents hovering over my shoulder, so I was excited to be able to pick out what I wanted my hair to look like. The hairdresser's first mistake was measuring the length of my chin length bangs with her scissors. Then she went ahead and twitched or something and cut them, literally half an inch from where the root was. I internally freaked out. She apologized, finished the cut, then styled my hair all for free and only charged me half of what I owed her. But dang girl. I had fricked up bangs for weeks after that. 
I was just trimming away snip snip and doing what I thought was a nice job. I was taking off a lot of hair, maybe a little bit too much, but I didn't really think it mattered. Suddenly, I was interrupted when my mother walked into the room to see her 4 year old daughter with a pair of safety scissors in her hand and a bowl of hair on her lap. The look on her face told me that I had done gone and fricked up. As a toddler I did the same thing. But I ended up trailing locks of blonde curls down the stairs which served as a breadcrumb trail for my mother. She found me with a pixie cut watching Kipper the dog. My dad who's not a hairdresser barber had us over at his house one weekend. Divorced. And gave me and one of my sister's haircuts at home. My dad is a deadbeat and my mom gave him money to take us to get professional haircuts which he blew on cigarettes. He ended up shaving my head and then giving my sister by far one of the worst haircuts I've ever seen. He shaved the sides of her head and kept the back long and top long but cut her bangs. Really short as well. She had about an inch of bangs that didn't go much further than where her hairline started. When he dropped us off back home my mom was outside and came walking up to the car where my sister was in the backseat and to this day I still laugh at her priceless reaction face. What did you do to her? She looks like a retard. Many years ago I had my eyebrow pierced and the barber got a comb stuck in it. Motherfucking painful. I shiver at the thought. That's all I got. I have cartilage piercings on my ear. And hairdressers get combs caught in them all the time. It was incredibly painful when the piercings were still new and they really got yanked. Not quite the same thing, and I'm probably really late in saying this, but when I was super little, I used to go around the house with some scissors and cut the carpets around the house because I didn't want the house's hair to grow out too long. I was the recipient of a fricked up moment. Inexperienced hairdresser was cutting my hair. I was 7 years old, about to go on a family vacation and wanted a buzz cut. She started with a trimmer on two and in the middle of my head. Guide fell off and she buzzed a stripe down the center of my head. Parents made the call to cut it down all the way. Literally heard her say frick the second the guide slipped off. So here is 7 year old me, paste white, skinny and an almost shaved head. I couldn't for the life lf me figured out why everyone was so nice to me on vacation. Oh. Once upon a time the first haircut I gave was to my brother. I was using clippers and thought I kinda knew what I was doing, but really I didn't. I proceed to give him a haircut. It's actually going relatively well at this point, so my confidence is a little boosted. Saw the sides of his hair touching his ear. Decided it needed to be trimmed. Instead of using scissors, or just going around the edge of the ear without a guard, I used the taper guard. By the time I realized it was a bad idea, he was missing a patch of hair on the side of his head right above his ear. I swear he looked like Skrillex. He was so pee. My girlfriend is a hairdresser and this is my favorite story she's told me. When she was in hairdresser school her year was the last year to do the cutthroat razor shave. It's used in a lot of men's haircuts, but they also learn to shave the guy's face swell. Because you're already there so why not? So all the students had to bring in someone and shave them. She bought in her dad. I don't think I've ever seen him with facial hair so it would have been pretty easy to do. This other girl in the class, however, chose someone with around a week old growth. So the girl goes in white eraser and starts on the sideburns. Working her way down and it's all going well. And then she gets to the neck and hidden under this small beard is the Adam's apple from heck. The girl has no idea how to deal with it so she just goes straight in. The skin from around the guy's Adam's apple flaps off like a bit of pepperoni and the cut goes white before pee out blood. Had to call the ambulance and everything. Freaks me out. My butthole clenched so hard at your picture perfect description. Good lord. I dated a girl that made extra money doing hair for dead bodies prep for open caskets. She allegedly once gave a very masculine looking corpse a men's haircut, then found out it was a woman. The client didn't complain though. My cosmetology teacher used to do hair and makeup on corpses. The only thing I remember her telling us about it was that she would always do the hair first, so that the face would have some hair dryer warmth to it when she did the makeup. I got a coupon for half off at a local salon. I'm a guy with fairly long hair. I asked them to cut about an inch off its shoulder length. But sadly, I wasn't watching closely as I got the hair cut. When the hairdresser was done she asked me how I liked it. At this point I realized something was very, very wrong. 
There was a name for this haircut. What was it? Oh yeah. She gave me a freaking mullet. As I sat there speechless at how awful I looked the hairdresser said, Tell you what. This one is on me. My next painful lesson. Hair grows more slowly on the sides of your head than top or back. So. Don't ever just let your mullet grow out. So. Don't ever just let your mullet grow out. Noted. Thank you for your sacrifice. When I was a Titus student, my friends and I frequented a crappy hairdresser that was about half the price of a decent one. The cuts were average as frick, but it seemed worth it for the savings. I was waiting for my friend to have her hair finished and I was going to go after. Halfway through the haircut the hairdresser cuts his finger badly and starts bleeding all over her hair. I only realized something was wrong when I heard a massive thud. My friend had fainted at the sight of the blood and slid clean out of the chair onto the floor. The thud was her head hitting the ground. She also acquired a concussion. We started shelling out for decent hairdressers after that. It's actually quite common to cut your finger as a hairdresser. Few times a year. Although I usually just excuse myself immediately and not let my client know. Those scissors can cost upwards of $1000 and can cut through bone if you tried. My friend is a hairdresser. When she was an apprentice at a salon another girl she worked with needed a hair model for a chin length bob. My hair grows really fast so I said I would do it because if it was a little bit too short I wouldn't be that stressed over it. I ended up with Edward Cullen length hair. IDK how I didn't cry, probably because I was in such shock. It took me about a year to grow out past my shoulders again. I'm not a hairdresser, but I used to be really into cutting hair, mostly my own. But then my sister was brave enough to let me cut hers. All she asked was that the end result be still long enough to be tied into a ponytail. So brilliant. Problem solving me. Decides to first get the right length, then a style. I hold all of her hair in my right hand as if my fingers were a scrunchie creating a ponytail. And just chopping off everything that stuck out with the scissors in my left hand. It wasn't until at least halfway through the chop that I realized her hair was slipping away in my hand. I released my right hand only to realize she had 1-2 inches of hair left towards the bottom of the ponytail I was approximating. I panicked and quit right then and she had to go to her salon to have it fixed. They made it look like a cremini mushroom helmet. I'm pretty sure she still hates me for it. She totally still hates you for it. My brother still hates me for cutting his hair off. In my defense. He told me to cut it like the Mythbusters guy and I got very confused. You really gotta be specific with that sort of thing. Story time. I finally have a reason to tell it. So my aunt always cuts my uncle's hair to save on money and he has some relatively thin hair so it is an easy job. Just a three all over and trim around the ears and his hair would be perfect. For him. Anyway. It is a Sunday evening and my dad and I went over to drop off grass clippings and she is on their back deck cutting his hair so we decide to stick around and converse for a little bit. So my aunt gets the initial three done and puts the one blade to trim around his ears and get his neckline right. She's moving along just fine and my dad brings up the family reunion that is the following weekend. There are about 120 members that go. And she takes the razor and makes a swift stroke right across the top as if the razor were a 3. My dad and I had the perfect jaw drop which led her to say, Oh crap. Her eyes are bigger than ever with surprise as my uncle sits there still seemingly clueless as he is taking time to process what just happened and my dad and I continue to sit there speechless. Needless to say. His hair needed to get chopped down to a 1 making him as close to bald as he could get while still having hair on his head. He said on Monday he forgot his keys so he couldn't go into work and then worked from home on Tuesday. His hair obviously didn't grow back by the time the reunion came along and of course jokes ensued. TLDR. She forgot she had a 1 on the razor and gave him a reverse mohawk. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.